so just to kind of give a little bit of a preface here or, or a little bit of background so this match was played yesterday um yesterday night it was of course street hoops versus bird noises this was a playoff decider match to basically see if bird noises would make would be able to make playoffs or not um and they lost five to three in what I would call a game that personally I think could have gone either way, but there was just a lot of, some beef from from uh, bird noises in certain p places where they had an advantage, and they just didn't play it right. Uh, so pretty much, I just want to go over this. Want to point out like. Personally, I'm going to be doing it from the Bird Noises perspective rather than 20B because I don't think they, like 20B, no, like, I don't know, they won. I don't need to tell them anything or explain what went wrong for 20B because they won. I don't feel like that's necessary. Uh, but yeah, Bird Noises is a team with a lot of potential and I just want to go over it, teach you, show you guys some things and yeah. Let's get this going. I'm gonna watch the middle at like 60% right now. So. Here, I'm just gonna speed it up here. As you can see, there's some Alec binds coming out, some Banny memes. Okay, so. Let's actually watch this quite slow here. Get on Psy Guy. So Psy Guy and Duana, right off the bat, get meet each other at the mid, same time. So it's pretty clear. Like Psy's a Psy's a pretty good demo man, and so I'm not surprised that he's like able to compete with Duana in the middle. So first thing to point out though, and I saw this during the match, Duana was running booties, whereas uh, I think Psy Guy wasn't. Yes, he wasn't. So, that is naturally going to allow Duana just to be more aggressive with his speed and his health, and maybe not even rely on heals as much. Um, <laughs> fucking dingo, dude, you're just cracking me up, man. Because I know the kind of people you're making fun of. Um, so yeah, right off the bat, you can see that this middle's going to... You can assume that Duana is going to be playing a lot more aggressive. Whereas Psy Guy might be more defensive. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. I'm, um, Hellbent. Let's see here what else is going on here. We have... I think Ash is doing a fast roll. He might not be. I don't think Ash is doing a fast roll. Hellbent is for sure trying to do a fast roll here. So let's, let's, let's play it again. Here we go. So... Hellbent just kind of is opting to spam. 20B, both scouts up top right now. I'm just kind of free camming this. And it looks like uh, Duana kind of got spammed a little hard here. So right now it's just like... Uh... Okay, so right now I'm just going to pause real quick. So this is like the standard mid setup for both these teams right now. From For most of the mids. Like, I saw Burn Noises do this a lot and I kind of liked it. Although I personally don't like where Hellbent is playing because it's too easy to knock him off. So Burn Noises, what they do is they put Vol on the rock, Hellbent on the uh, awning there, and then they'd uh, have pretty much like, they'd just play a passive mid in this kind of whole area here. And uh, they never, what I notice right now is they don't even have, uh, this is not up to Mr. Sling quality. <laughs> what I notice right now is they don't even have presence on the high ground. So like that's, like with their scouts, which I think is not that great. Like I know they're playing defensive, but the problem is they're like putting themselves in a position right now where they don't like if a soldier, like if the if, if twenty B just take all this ground here, like on on the point, like I feel like bird noises we're gonna get shut down. So I'm pausing now. Let's see how the mid plays out. Again, they're just spamming. They're trying to get damage. Alec, this like twenty B just has superior like high like in my opinion superior high ground, and they're just gonna get aggro on this. Duana is kind of isolated on the left, and mid's playing slow. Okay, so soldiers drop off, Hellbent's out of the fight, Vol bombs, Ash counter jumps, 
going deep. And as you can see right now, all of 20B are just going to try and collapse here. Ash just gets killed instantly by Psyguy. But this mid could definitely still go 20B's favor. Okay, I'm pausing right now. Like, so is, like they got the first pick and they're going to get the second here, of course, because Duwana is like overextending. Well, he's not overextending, but he's in a position where... Like, his teammates can't help him. Like, he can't... Number one, he can't do that much damage. But his teammates are just, like... They're over there still. And he's just gonna die kind of uselessly. So, once Duana dies here, I can predict that they're gonna lose this mid. Yep. So, Duana's gonna go down. No, he's not. He's living much longer than I expected. Okay, Sizer gets Vol. Sizer gets Guy. Okay, so... Right there... They didn't focus down Duana. That was really bad. Like, Duana should have just died instantly there. Like, they just let him kind of... First of all, they let him walk in from here to here. Like, through the midst of their entire team. He was lit, but he never died. And then Endus got separated from heals. Like, he's, his heals got separated from the rest of the players over there. And so these guys were lit, and then there was, like, kind of no support there. And then Sizer just cleans them up. That was the strangest mid I've ever seen. But right now, because numbers are even, and pretty much it's like the same picks for both teams, Soldier and Demo, it can still go either way. Uh, Endos has a faster add here that might come into play. Let's see how that works. So, Duwana goes down to Endus. Sizer's coming in, gets focused because he's isolated from the rest of the team. And actually, I just want to point out right now, 20B is very passive. It looks like they don't want to commit here. Cousin just wants to get his Uber or something. I'm not sure what's going on there. Not what. So Showstopper's gonna bomb, and I think. Yeah, they're just backing out. Looks like so. And just sees this guy coming. And Showstopper shouldn't do very much here. What the? Heck? Oh my god, he gets caught in a wall. Yeah, they're just backing up. So Cousin wants to leave, and they're gonna leave and maintain that, which is the safe play. And I think it was based on the fact that, uh, that Endus got a saw. Brew Noise is one that made the moment Ash bombed, and they all in one by one. By one. Uh, that's kind of true, but, like, that's too early. Like, when you get a pick that early, it's like, you probably lose the mid, but there's a lot of things that can happen. They lost that mid when they lost Ash and Duwana, because Duwana could have just stayed further back and done infinitely more damage like and had his soldiers and maybe other players lead the front because you can st like bird noises had shit positioning there like they didn't they gave up so much ground at the start of the mid that 20b had no pressure on them so 20b just had to walk forward but duwana was the one leading the charge which i don't agree with personally i think he should have been a little bit further back than when he where he was and that should have been a scout in his position but anyways so bird noises win the mid and pretty much I say my only criticism right there is like, I think, I like the way they start their mids, but I think Hellbent and their scouts, like Hellbent should be in a more aggressive position, and their scouts should be playing high ground, if the, like even if they play slow and passive. So right now we got even adds, pretty much like same trades, the players are coming in. You can guess that uh, there's going to be some kind of play coming out here from Bird Noises, 20B. They don't have to go for anything. Now, a lot of people are like, um, oh, when you're holding second, don't go for plays. You know, don't die. Don't give them an advantage. And that's pr mostly true. And I'd say if you have, um, if, you're, if you're like even rounds and stuff, don't do it. But if the opportunity arises, you should always try and go for like a play. Like personally, like if I knew that Endus say was in the choke, uh, hold on. If Endus was like in the choke here, then I would go for it as Ash. But this play is probably going to come out from Hellbent. Hellbent, pretty solid roamer. I think he's going to have a lot of improvement like for the next season. I think he'll impress a lot of people. So anyway, so what, let's see here. What do they do? Let's speed it up a little bit. Van's poking IT. I think he's... I can't tell if he's just like poking for the sake of it or trying to spot... So, okay, they're buffing up Hellbent right now. Um, okay, so, okay, I know what they're doing already. 
So Endos is pushing heals with Vol and Vand in IT. And what they're going to do right now is they're going to pressure IT and they're going to try and make Kozen get onto the point. Now, this is really good because when Kozen, Kozen their heals are going to rotate to kind of confront Endus's heals there. And so Kozen's going to be caught in kind of this area where he's number one, not looking for waiting for this bomb. And number two, He's just in a position where, like, Hellbent will just get an easy force, assuming things play out correctly. Um, but 20B is a good team, and Kozen's a very smart player, so they might see right through this. They know, like, if you're a smart team, you should know that if a team starts pressuring off of even, like, even add, even picks, they are really not likely to push unless you're giving them a ton of space. So right now already... I can feel like this play's not going to work because 20B are going to see right through it. They're going to be like, oh, they're distracting IT, so now there's going to be a guy coming choke or sewer or something. So it might still work just because of, you know, DM skills, but I don't I don't see it working. So right now, they're poking. Ash gets the call, obviously, as you can see there. He's backing up. Koz Kozen's starting to rotate heals there. Hellbent comes in. Here comes the bomb. Kozen, oh, he just gets air shot. And he hits a good Raga there. So... Already, his timing was like almost perfect. If he had waited, delayed like one more second, he would have been fine. But the problem is Duwatna was like playing here before and he got the early call when this guy was just coming in. So his cousin just needed to back up and sadly he got air shot, which I think was bad luck. I think had he not gotten air shot, he could have hit the second rocket there. Like he would have hit the first and then hit the second or like at least gone for the second and then cousin would have popped. But that play just got shut down by an air shot from Sho. Um, and now they're down one. So, right now, 20B, they're down one, but they shouldn't be giving too much space. Like, okay, so this is my personal philosophy, is that when you go down one, you have two options. You can bait them into you, where, like what Bird Noises is doing right now, they're gonna, they should be baiting them into them. They're gonna have Vol on high ground, side. Sai should be playing like right there where Endust is. Um, and 20B should be pushing into Choke or Sewer or something. I don't see 20B pushing IT because it's just not practical if you want to push off of one pick. It's too easy to shut down. So, yeah. So, basically, Burn Noises right now, they just want to play defensively. However, this is my personal philosophy again. Like, if I was the main caller on this team or whatever, I would probably opt to have my players more aggressive. Because when you're down one pick, like, sure, you're down one player, and that's like a less damage output, technically. But essentially, what you can do is you can just have your pocket play aggro with your demo, and you can just completely destroy them in the choke there, like, as soon as they start entering. And if they're going to commit to it anyway, just have your demo back out, and all your players back out, and then solo vol. Because... They're going to try pushing in as a team, and that's the only way this works. Like, they can't just solo show through choke. That's not how that... You can't do that on this map, because there's too much ground for him to cover before he can reach the combo. So all they need to do, if they're playing aggressive, is uh, just spam really hard, close in the choke. Like, get a nice call where they're coming from, spam really hard where they're coming from. And if they commit to it, you can just solo vol. Make them flash a lot, have a better uber, and then use your superior heals and buffs to, to push second. And you can just turn it into a second push. But that's a personal philosophy. I don't think a lot of TF2 play, like a lot, most people will opt for the safe defensive play. So they're going to do that, it looks like. Duwant is going to poke choke. Alex and Sewer. Van's spotting IT deep. They know they're not going IT. Ash jumps in. He's entry here. Okay, I think I remember seeing this. Now... This is perfect for Brood Noises, because Ash, I think, actually, no. I don't think they wanted to push, now that I think about it. No, they wouldn't send Ash in like that. And if they did, that was a mistake on 20B's part. Because, like, if Ash is going to be the, kind of, like, the the first person in, he shouldn't be bombing that deep. Like, if that's, if their goal is to make a push, if that's the goal, he shouldn't be bombing this deep and committing this far, because he's just going to get caught out. I would have much rather seen Ash, like, land like on the rock or there or on the awning behind the blue crate. But instead he lands here. So I'm assuming that 20B are like, okay, we're not going to push this. Let's just send in Ash. And get him buffed up a choke and send in Ash for like a play. 
So Ash goes down, they just trade roamers. And now Hellbent gets up, and they get the forward. And yeah, so we're just kind of at a reset here, pretty much a stalemate again. Okay, it looks like Vol wants to do something off this pick right now. Because that is quite a long spawn, and Hellbent had a better spawn. So... They're gonna, yeah, so Hellbent's going to go IT. Then what they're going to want to try and do here, what they should be doing here, is uh, pushing in a yard, kind of slow push, in a way where, like, you're going to want to not use if you push through here. Like, okay, so I'm going to explain something real quick about, like, my philosophy on how you can use Ubers effectively and the ways to use them. And, okay, so step number one, like, if you're going to use through, like, if you're going to push through kind of an area where there's a lot of ground to cover, your goal right there is to not, like, your, the goal from the get-go is to not even use. You don't want to pop until maybe you get to this point. You want to use your pick advantage or whatever advantage you're pushing off of on an even add to kind of get positioning and then have a favorable fight afterwards. Now, say if they were pushing IT instead of um, choke that is a play where you're going to be using early and the point of your uber is to gain said positioning for the post like you're going to use through and you're going to make the multi-force maybe get some picks and then you just take positioning with the uber and you use right away and that's kind of the goal so right now burn noises they don't want to use they should not tr use vol jumps in makes some space you want a smart player, keep spamming it. Uh, 20B are playing their positions right right now. Endus gets in pretty much clean. Um, and Hellbent, again, not again, but Hellbent right here, he's getting in almost unseen. And this is perfect. Like, this is really good for Hellbent. Like, if you as a roamer can get in IT and they don't, like, recognize it and they don't see it, like, that sets you up very well. So Endus is kind of... Looks like Showstopper wants to commit here. Like, I can just tell. He wants to take an Uber in. Yeah, he's gonna solo here. That's a good Uber from Show. And us, Maltese. Hellbent decides to back off IT because the Ubers are going off. And I think, yeah, Sai's gonna get caught out there. So. Right now, uh, 20B are gonna try flooding through off of that demo pick. So, you lose a demo here. And they have full six and there's no ubers this is kind of a fight like that is very unfavorable however it's not like you can't do anything about it like having the demo nullifies traps nullifies having effective m1 m2 spam but they still have two soldiers here and because there's no uber it's really easy to like focus with your soldier spam and like get picks on entry because like okay look how blocked 20b is right now just look like the only player pushing from a different entrance right now is like they have show in sewer and they have ash in it so like okay so the safe play the one that will guarantee that no nothing goes wrong is they spam and they kind of exit and they kite and spam as they go, but nothing gets done, right? So they're just going to give up mid off of one pick. Which personally, again, my personal philosophy, I don't agree with that. And you might like you might think, well, why would you not take the safe play? Well, it's a match. It's you know, it's high pressure. Personally, I think going for risky plays is what will make you a better and more dynamic team and kind of more unexpected. I don't know. But if they had set it up right. Burn Noises could have had their soldiers a little more aggressive and just spam these guys as they come through and have the scouts like kind of focus on these other entry ways. Like soldier IT can get shut down very easily from just one scout sitting there and standing on the roof. And the soldier sewer can also get shut down from a scout just standing on the roof. So again, I would have liked to see uh, Burn Noises play with their soldiers aggro and just shut down this blob push. Because they have so many players pushing through the choke, and like, not like one by one, they're just coming in all at once. Um, so yeah, but they're gonna probably take the safe route and not drop anyone here. Ooh, Van, Van's very aggressive. That's weird, like, Van shouldn't be this aggro, like, it would be okay.
it, it would be okay if Van was this aggressive if his soldiers were in uh, an aggressive position like I would like to see them. So, they're just going to lose Van. Um, and I don't know. That's going to put them two down now. And this is role's going to continue. Like, they either needed to be all in passive or all in aggressive. Like, you can't have that. Uh, like, it was, must have been a miscommunication or something on the on, on, on Burnrose's part. But right now, they're just going to lose Van very quickly. And now they got two picks. So, demo and scout. So, as a result of that, uh, 20B are going to leave one. Like, maybe where they might not have committed as hard, 20B are just going to go deep now. They're just going to kill Van. Yeah, Van goes down. They have no choice. They can't do anything now. They're too dead. They have to get the fuck out. So here comes Sho going deep. They're going to want to chase on that. 20B is not going to let this slide. Halben said choke. They're too dead. They like... Like, the problem with going too down there, and it's like really bad. It's really bad because... Uh, now they are not in a position... Brunois is right now are not in a position to like really make anything happen. Like, they can go... They can commit to the fight, but they're, they have no players there. Like, I guess Sai just enters now, but he's not in a good position to, like, stop them from entry. Like, once 20B gets in this, like, yard here, this valley area, like, they lose this point just by default of not having enough damage output. And so they should not have gone one down there. And it's, it's crazy that such a minor mistake, oh, just losing one player, uh, ends up costing a lot like that that little miscommunication is now going to cost them second as well assuming 20b plays it right and maybe no one does anything crazy so hellbent's here hellbent looks like he's in a position where he like wants to do something okay so both soldiers bomb deep here so guy is actually able to take ground because i think the players choke they didn't interesting i don't know this might turn out good so, Ash is bombing. But you can just kind of see the slow play here from, like, all of 20B. They're just cycling jumps, cycling jumps, and playing off that numbers advantage. So, that was smart of 20B there. I think it's the best thing they could have done. Because the only way Brew Noises wins that fight, considering, like, Sai was able to get some positioning, was if they got a pick on a player that was like trying to go too deep or 20b pushed it too fast and then they could have it could have like caused a lot of more chaos but instead they bomb in ash ash jumps out showstopper bombs in in, in return and then jump show jumps out and rinse repeat rinse repeat and then the team kind of pushes with heels like as a blob and this forces this makes it so that the lack of numbers actually matters because when you play slow, when you have numbers add, you're always going to win. You play fast when you have numbers add, you might lose. You might lose. You might make a mistake. You might get caught out. So I guess the lesson to be learned here is if you have numbers add, always play slow. Always try and like slowly bully them out. You don't have to overcommit and drop players. Sadly, Vol dies. I think like it was good of bird noises to try and attempt that fight but there was a certain point where they should have realized hey we're not getting any damage here we're not really getting anything we need to get the fuck out so they, they i don't know they lose vol but they trade for show so i guess it's okay and they're gonna they should not be committing van shouldn't be committing here link you what this is yeah okay luckily they they get out i hope Oh man, 20B's... Tw this is actually kind of working, actually. I'm surprised. No, Van, Van over commits, and they use... And, oh my... Now that must suck. So, I'm guessing... Now, I think there's a couple bird noises guys watching this. I'm guessing you guys stayed in there because Endus was about to get Uber. And you wanted to have an exchange and not give up the point for free. But I think... That was a bad idea once you lost um, Vol. Like, yeah, no, that I personally, I think that was a bad idea. Because you guys lost Vol, and even though you traded for show, like, you had no positioning. Like, this would have been a fine play if you guys 
had maintained point control and had the the height advantage over them. But you guys were like in this position where you can't really come back out and like even if you had gotten the Uber there, you use and then you have to retake positioning rather than stop the push, which can make things a lot more chaotic. So I just don't agree with that. I I think Enda should have taken the really safe route, just backed up to last, at least once Vol died. If Vol had not died, I think that would have worked. But you guys, Vol died, and then you guys backed up too far, and then you tried to come back in when it should have just been a play. Like, like it should have just been either you're all in or all out. And again, you never, like, the best advice I can give in, to any team, new, old, whatever, like, you don't want to be caught in no man's land. Like, right there is what that was. Like, Endus should have just been in the shutter anyway. Like, even if he wanted to take that Uber, which I don't agree with, he should have been just chilling in the shutter. And then at least he would not have died there. But but they were in no man's land, and they were like... I, I, it seemed like there was uncertainty there on what they wanted to do. So they lose two, and... Now, tw Bird Noises are in a really awful position right now. Like... They don't, they're going to not have advantage. They're too dead. Let's see. Looks like 20B are not going to wait for the ad, which is smart. I agree with this. Dry push right now. Don't give them time to set up. So, right now, big thing is, this round was lost as soon as Endus died there. Like, assuming 20B plays things right, which it looks like they are, that round was lost as soon as Endos died there. As soon as Endos got the Uber. Or didn't get the Uber and, and died. And they went down another. So. This is the smartest thing 20B can do in my opinion. And honestly I don't even think my own team does this enough. When we get picks. We like. When you get picks. And maybe you're like on the verge of. You're like in that transition where you're pushing second to last. You're going to want to like dry push before they can get their defense set up like because even if 20b like say like had been able to like get a defense up or like were able to like that they had that in mind like okay look we're gonna get this defense up we're gonna get a heavy and blah 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 it won't matter if 20b just comes in before like if because you want to catch them you want to catch the defending team before they can get their defense set up like look at this Bernays had no positioning at all, like whatsoever. And honestly, me, like personally, I would have expected this play from 20B. They're going to come in on these picks. They should, at least. And so knowing this, Bird Noises, in my opinion, they have no other choice. Now, it's not the smart play, but it's the one that's going to take 20B off guard. Bird Noises, in my opinion, should have been playing up with their spam classes. Is Vol a spawner? No. So Hellbent and Vol lived that entire time. Or Vol was a spawner, but then was alive before this push happened. Because he died on second. So I would have rather had, in my opinion, this is my what I would have called, I would have had my players play up. Right there. Holding the lobby doors. Maybe not worrying about right and roll out so much. Because if a team is going to dry push without Ubers, they're going to want to take the most... The route where they're going to receive the least spam or get shut down the hardest. So I would have had my projectile classes play close here. I would have had Psy Guy just M1, M2. Because look at this. Again, look at the blob here. If Psy Guy is just holding close and then all the spam is focused on these players here, they could get one, two, three picks. And us would spawn in time. It would be like a more chaotic battle. Which, even though it might not necessarily go in, in Brunois' favor, would nonetheless... Give them a better chance than just chilling right now. So 20B are going to win this round. Like, unless there's some harsh choke. 20B, again, just flooding in the left. Again, they're not stopped. They're no damage really being output from bird noises. Heavy comes out. Endus isn't even able to heal anyone. Okay. Well, that was... Ally gets on point. I think that wasn't necessary in my opinion. Like, it was good to get point presence, but personally, 
The only times you want to get on point is if there's no one near the point, or if they're down a few, and you force them to, like, you, they're, like, three up, and they can't, like, so if you go down point and there's no stickies, if they're all six up still, they just need to commit one guy to stopping the point. Yeah, this is a little annoying. <laughs> if they're not, however, not all six up, and maybe they're three up or four up, all you need to do is put one guy on point, and suddenly they have to almost commit their entire team. And they're going to lose by default, just because you're going to know that they have to. So anyways, they drop two here, 20B does. But, like right now, just like, the fact that Ash and Duwana... Why is this heavy making so much noise? The fact that Ash and Duwana... Oh my god, Kozen goes down. Sizer's... Oh, they win this round, I remember, because Sizer gets a bunch of kills. That was almost really well played from Brew Noises. But I'm not going to say that they played it well. Because I feel like they got lucky. They got lucky because 20B extended players into them and gave them picks. Instead of, again, playing slow. They rushed it a little. They jumped a guy in deep for like no apparent reason. And they dropped a player, which I, I just don't agree with. I think that if 20B just played it slow and kind of focused more on spamming. Because, again, they have a heavy. They don't, they're not mobile. They... They have to sit back, and you just spam, and spam, and spam, and spam. Eventually, you win that fight, because you have positioning, and you have the players. But they dropped one or two by overcommitting. I mean, I think the Alec death could have been okay, but then they dropped Sho as well. I think Sho, like, bombed in from rollout into, like, five players, which I think, in hindsight, wasn't the best move, unless, like, his whole team is deep committing with him. Like, they're all bombing in. They're all committing. So, anyways... That's a round lost. And we're going to move on to the next mid here. Okay. So next mid. Looks like, uh, hold on here. Let's just see where the demos are playing. Duwana is a little slower and a lot less healthy than Saigai, which is odd considering he's running booties. I would expect him to be faster. But anyway, so good early damage from Sai, good fast rollout from Sai. The fact that they're shutting down Duwana early makes it so that the scouts that are eventually going to be up here, like from assuming Brunoises does that, like, okay, so right now Duwana is weak. And what Brunoises need to do is, like, a lot of times, this is a problem with so many teams. You'll hear Demo Man is weak early on in the mid, and, like, you have two options. If the Demo Man is in a position where you can commit to him, commit to him. So, like, say he stays here, right? You can just jump a player, you can rush your scouts into him. However, Duana is probably going to do the smart thing and just back up. Now, knowing this... That's a huge thing. Like, people don't realize it. That's such a huge thing that Duwana is now forced to just play passive a choke. And Burn Noises should know this. Like, Sai's having a really good mid, even in this first few seconds. So Burn Noises should know this and make their scouts get aggressive on it. Because if they can take the positioning fast enough, like, Duwana is just not going to be able to pressure them, and the scouts will have free reign up top. So, but... What I likely am going to see Bernoises do is their standard mid where they play passive and don't have scouts up top. So again, Duana. Look at Duana. He can't spam anything. He can't spam a single thing right now. Like, he can try, but he's just not in a position where he can get good spam. So, but again, look. Look, look at what Bernoises are doing. This, this is like not what they should be doing right now. They have... Because look, 20B has no positioning on the blue crate there like it's Alec kind of poking it I don't know I just don't agree with like the, the burn noise is not taking high ground here with their scouts it it doesn't make sense or did I say 20b I mean I don't agree with burn noises doing that like they why are both their scouts on floor if they just push their scouts up and like chipped at Duwatna Kozen has to keep healing him like you you push your your, your scouts up they're playing on the cr the red crate, and they just chip at Duwatna. Hellbent 
is playing like on the lower red crate. Hold on, wait, wait, where is he right now? The lower red crate, like right there. And then they they should win this mid, even based off that little thing. Or they could they have a better chance of playing it correctly. But instead they're gonna let Duwana heal up. And so now 20B. See, like like they play slow when they shouldn't. They should have played faster there. Taking advantage of the situation. But they're just playing slow. And them playing slow is actually helping 20B. It's like, oh, they're not being aggressive off the early damage. And now we're just going to chill and heal up Duwana. And then turn it into a normal mid fight again. Which I think 20B has an advantage in that fight. They're a more experienced team. They, Their bombs are probably going to be more coordinated. Etc, etc. So Vol jumps in here. Trying to make space. He bombs in, shoots at Ash. Ash is doing nothing in IT. So, like... Okay, so Ash did this a lot. And it's actually not a bad thing. To just sit in your own IT. Because, number one... Where is he here? Where's Ash? You're shutting down that whole lane where they can push across your health kit. So, actually, this is a perfect counter to what 20 B or to what Bird Noises could have done there. So, to put it this way, Bird Noises, they do a lot of damage to Duana early, so they get aggressive. Ash is in a perfect position right now to spam them as they try pushing across the health kit to get aggro and kind of shut down the push. So this is really good from Ash. And the thing is, it was kind of nullified when they didn't get aggressive and he was kind of in a position where I think he's not doing a lot. He still has a bomb from there though. So he can do, he's the potential to do something, but right now he's not doing anything. And Vol does something that I don't agree with, where he like bombs and then pays attention to Ash, which I think was like, he shouldn't have done that. Like he should have just not shot at Ash. Like I would have just shot at other players, but he's, he gives Ash attention and actually makes him useful in that position. And now he's lit because Ash hits a nice direct. So this is interesting actually from 20B. They have both soldiers on each IT. Again, like, as you can just see, the the story of these mids, it seems, is that there's no positioning from from bird noises ever. Like, they're, they're always playing, like, to play passive and slow is good. Ascent does that. They're very good at it at the start of the mid to kind of play passive and slow. But what they don't do is they don't just keep doing it. If, at some point, they're going to send in Mela. At some point, they're going to push their scouts across the point, and then they're going to push with their whole team. Bur Burn Noises are doing a good start to the middle, but they play the, the end of it really bad. Like, they're just giving up so much space. Like, look, the fact that Sizer can walk up that far, not like, not even touched almost, and Alec is even up here. Like, think about that. Alec's right here. That's just not playing good positioning. Like, they're giving them too much space, and 20B are taking it. Also, I might add that Kozen is on crits right now. So this is uh, something that will come into play at, at some point here. So anyways, this mid is just looking bad. They, they're, they're too passive. Also, Van, that is good to know. But nonetheless, like, even if you guys weren't calming, how you're playing the mids is, is a huge issue. So you guys are going to drop players and yeah, you're going to just have to leave. Bruno just has to leave. And uh, the crits comes out. Do you want to get Psy guy? Obviously, they're not ready for this. So they're just going to get a bunch of frags. And 20B should chase really hard here and try and get into us. Because, ooh, Endus is just going to get the Uber. I remember Banny saying something along the lines here of like he's going to Uber Hellbent. But that was like not something that Endos should ever do. Like, just let Hellbent die. Get your Uber and save it for another fight later. So that was good of Endos there to just get the fuck out and use Hellbent as bait. It's one of the few times I would like agree with that. Since now they have Uber to push into 20B. So 20B are gonna get mid. Lots of trades here. Like as you can see, a lot of players are down from both teams. So they're going to set up for a second hold and probably push. But I want to see how they push this Uber. Like they have Uber ad right now. I want to see how they push with the, like into the, knowing that they have full ad and that they have crits here. Because right now, like, I'm just going to explain a few things right now. Um, so 
20B in this situation, they know, okay, they're going to have Uber. They're going to come into us. Now, there's a, several things they can do here. But the ideal play is they get the force out of um, bird noises when they push in, like early. And then they kite and then go back in with crits. Like they give up point, then they come back in with the crits. Bird noises... They have two options right now, knowing that 20B are probably going to do this. They need to take a double soldier Uber, in my opinion, through IT. Wait, where's Kozen? In my opinion, through IT. And get aggressive, where they can catch out Kozen, assuming that he's not playing all the way at the back of choke. Uh, however, alternatively, they can try walking through the choke still, but that gives, like... They might be able to slow push it and not use. But if they're going to want to Uber here, they have to, like, they can't just slow push. Because I think that that's going to give Kozen time to get the crits. And then they're going to get mid slowly. And then Kozen's going to have crits on second. And then 20B just needs to crits onto them. And then, like, force the Uber as Endos is coming through choke. They back out and then have a post Uber fight where there's no, there's no Ubers, no, no charges of any kind. So, personally, I think they want to kill a Kozen here, and the best way to do it is to take both Soldier's IT. In my opinion. But that depends on where Kozen's playing. So, let's see how this plays out right now. They have Ad. Okay, Vol's going to go through Choke. So, right now, they, they like, the goal right now of Burn Noises is they don't want to use at all. Like, they Uber here, they're fucked. And us take some early damage. They're going to use. This is why I don't agree with this play. I don't agree with playing slow here. Also, I don't know. Van could have been playing on the rock. Like, they need to be ready for that bomb. Because now Endos is just going to get forced. And Kozen is going to have crits at and just come back in at some point. Or they're just going to, like, take the fight before the crits and, and win it out. So Ash is guaranteed this force here. Like, he just needs to hit, like, one good rock and Endos is 16 health. And there's a spam from the rest of 20B here. So, Endos is going to use. He's going to have a shit uber. Kozen is going to get the fuck out. Assuming they pressure him. And 20B are just going to win this fight after. So, I think Van should have just been playing the rock anyway. Or like playing high ground of some kind. Because it's not Van's job in this push, in this play, to make space right now. His job is to make sure that Endus doesn't use to any bullshit. And Vol's the one that should be bombing in and making space and kind of being a distraction. But they, they played it wrong in my opinion. And I think it's going to cost them. So Ash comes in, hits one rocket. Of course he's going to use. That was a beautiful rocket from Ash. Hellbank comes in. Just look at that. See? Kozen gets out immediately. Already in a, already in a good position. Just plays it right, gets out. He's going to rotate to choke with the rest of his team, and they're going to come back in. They drop two, though. So that was a mistake on 20B. Inherently, Bird Noises should have had a shit uber. 20B loses no one. But Showstopper gets caught out. Ash's death should have been predicted, because he was committing that deep for the force. It was good, though, even if he died. But Showstopper shouldn't have died right now. So that might give... Like, Bird Noises right now... They have two picks. They know Kozen's going to get crits soon. They have to flood through. Because otherwise, they're just playing in a position where they'll inevitably lose and get fucked. So now, Bird Noises have no choice but to push through. Honestly, I so, okay, this is good. Vol gets through. But it seems like the rest, like, no one, they're not rushing through. I just, I don't know. I, in this situation, I don't even think Hellbent needs to clear IT. I think Hellbent needs to just be going choke with the rest of his team. And just blob through, and they just double bomb and go deep. Like, just take as much space as possible. Because Vol going in alone here, Kozen can just still chill where he is. And they still have positioning. If they double bombed with Hellbent and Vol, Kozen might be a little bit more nervous. He might back up in a rollout, and then suddenly they're giving up positioning. But instead, they split their team up, which I don't think is the right play here. And so, they're going to play confident. 
I think Vol goes in for a play there. Yeah, this was like... That was like good in theory. But there was just some beef shots from both of the soldiers. Honestly, I don't agree with 20B. First of all, I don't agree with 20B being that aggressive in the first place. When they have that ad, it just kind of doesn't make sense. It's setting themselves up for error, which they don't need to do. So, Brunoise has had that chance, but they just fucked it up. Like, they had that chance to kill Kozen, maybe kill Sizer too, because he's lit. But they fucked it up. And now they're down to... I don't know. I just, I don't agree with that play. Or, I don't agree with the play from 20B, and they just... It gave Brunoise an opportunity, and... But, it works out. So... Full crits now coming in. Endus is just going to play IT. They have to give up mid. They can't even do anything here. So again, this is a common thing among good teams. Also, I just realized how slow I'm doing this demo, and I apologize. But I really want to do like an in-depth analysis, so I hope you guys don't mind. But this is a common thing, a common thing a lot of teams will do. Is you're going to want to play off an ad you have and kind of take ground, take positioning, take points with it. So the fact that Bernoises can't do anything here just means that they're now going to keep this advantage and use it to now get second point. So they get mid for free. Now Bernoises are backed up and they have to hold second point. So they're just going to walk in here with the crits. And again, because Endus isn't that close to Uber yet, they have two options. Like with their spawners, they either need to shut out the push completely by holding really aggress aggressive or they need to just be completely out and give up second and try and hold last. The one is risky, but could give them the chance to like switch the momentum. The other is safe, and they don't take any risks. Both of them are right, but I would opt for the more aggressive play because I don't like giving teams free space, free ground, ever. But anyways, so good. Okay, they do the good thing here. Don't push through choke there, because that's the easiest place for you to get, like, fucked with the crits. So they fake like they're going sewer, then they decide to go IT with the crits. Okay, so... I... Like, this is good assuming no one spots it, and no one can call it early, but it's awful for 20B to do this with this many players in this kind of a choke point. On a crits where like he can't, like Kozen can't make people invincible, so they're still vulnerable to spam. So like, honestly, the fact that they're not really I don't know if like they're double spamming because they did get the call they're coming there, or something, but I don't know. Twenty B are just in the most prime position to get royally fucked right now. If like bird noises see it and then start hard spamming. Okay, so. Hellbank commits here. That's bad. And the reason it's bad, you might think, is, well, he's trying to make a play. He's going to try and force the crits or whatever. In my opinion, the knowledge that their IT is good enough. Now they know where they're coming from with the crits, and all they need to do is figure out whether they're coming upper or lower. And, like, they can just set up their soldiers and their demo man to hard spam them. So their crits does nothing. They either don't come through with the crits or they get fucked trying to force the crits into doing a play here. So honestly, Hellbent's gonna die here. Yeah, he dies. And... Oh, they get Uber actually. I wasn't paying attention to that. So this is actually might work out because they did get Uber. But I still think Hellbent could have lived there. If they were that close to Uber, Hellbent doesn't need to make that play. So either there was a lack of like Endus keeping track of the Ubers there and Hellbent getting confused, or Hellbent maybe just not making the right decision even re regarding that. So they're going to take this Uber into what I think is one of the most awful positions to be in with crits and an Uber coming into you. So if burn noises don't fuck them here, I'm going to be surprised. Okay, so this could have been so much better if... Where's Sho here? How did he kill that guy? Okay, Sho died. This Uber could have been so much better if they just took a scout with them. But they soloed Vol, and I don't even think Endus took the consideration to even turn around and flash his scout. 
link user needed to be flashed there. Because now that just sets up 20B. Again, like, all these little mistakes add up. Burn noises, they flash link user there, they wipe the whole team. They don't, they get a pick. Like, 20B gets a pick behind the Uber, and all of a sudden, look at the, all this ground now. Because these players are now in second. So, they fucked up. This is a beautiful setup, and they fucked up. Twice, actually. Hellbent died, and then Link User got dropped. Captured. Which is a mistake on Endus' part. They're gonna pick Ash, and they do get some stray frags here and there, and they kill Kozen. So, the fight is, like, in their favor still. But that could have gone very bad. Very, very bad. And so, Vol's gonna come in here, making space. Alex, like... Just backing out with Duana and stuff. So they're, they're just going to like spam and kite. They're not going to commit to anything here. Which they shouldn't. And now Endus has an advantage of like 25. Maybe 30. By the time Kozen spawns. So here we go. I've only done 7 minutes of gameplay. My god. What time is it? This is one long ass demo review. It might take me four hours, man. No, no, no. So, anyways, let's uh. And this knows he has ad here. Is Kozen still on crits or no? Is he on Uber? Hold on, let me pause this real quick. Ba -ba -bum. Kozen's on Uber. And this knows he has ad. So, right now, they know that 20B is playing passive. So, again, they're not gonna wanna force here. Like, and us is not gonna wanna use at all coming through this right now. So let's slow it down a little bit. They're not going to want to force. 20B is playing passive. Ash is by himself IT. They shouldn't use here. They're just going to take the point for free. And they should realize that Kozen is going to be close to it and not overcommit. Vol wants to go though. I can already tell just by the way he's uh... So, they take this uber the wrong way. Assuming they know that Kozen is close to uber, even remotely, they don't want to take a scout into the uber. Because the scout can't cover enough ground on this last point to actually accomplish anything. A soldier can jump from like the entrance of lobby all the way here. A scout has to run, which takes infinitely longer. So, I think they thought they had bigger ad there, but assuming they knew they didn't have a big ad and they were taking a risk and trying to catch out Kozen, they should have taken Hellbent in and double bombed and then had the rest of the team follow up. But instead they take a scout and Kozen gets the uber because they can't kill him fast enough. And Vol's gonna get caught out, they just drop players. And now they can't even hold second anymore, so they're just gonna have to run away. Okay, I'm gonna pause real quick, just read the chat. Probably don't have to review the whole demo, a lot of these ended quickly in 20B's favor, I thought. They ended quickly, but the reason I'm doing this is because I want to point out how, like, the difference, like, Ascend is a really good team, because they don't make these little mistakes. Ascent probably would have taken both soldiers there, or maybe they would have had like a certain uber where they know that okay they they have their advantage like like this is what i'm trying to do here like when fast rounds happen there's a lot of little mistakes that end up adding up that to to, to these losses and i i kind of want to point that shit out because that's what really matters in invite it's not so much like oh they were all out of position in this well they were they just took a bad fight there. Because a lot of these fights, there's so much little stuff that adds up. Like, because TF2 is not, I'm just going to explain something. TF2 is not such a one-dimensional game where like, oh, they're in a bad position. That means nothing can happen. Because of the fact this game has quick like deathmatching where um, kind of you can turn things around based on your de DM makes it so that even if you're in a bad position, you have options. You have things you can do. So, this is why I'm, I'm going as slow as I am. Okay. 
So, again, Blue Noises just have to completely back out here. And because they drop so many on that last push and they give up second and mid. And it just goes to show, losing three players does not give you make you lose one point, it makes you lose two points. So now, Endus has a very insignificant ad in my opinion. Cousin's gonna start pushing in. So, you might think, okay, Endus has an insignificant ad here. This means nothing. But it actually means a lot because of how quickly 20B is pushing. Because these minor percentages actually do end up coming into play when a team can extend into them, right? Because if you can get a call, because you can see like the sizzling and all the, the charge, you can get a call that they don't have Uber yet on the other team, and you get that like 10, 50%, and they commit into you, you can just pop into them and kill the medic before they get Uber and turn that whole fight around. So this could matter, but it might not. Like it depends on how this is played. So 20B leading in here with Duwantna. This is weird because Like, Duwatna leads in, and then like the rest of his team is really slow. So Duwatna's in, he probably calls, I'm in, and then Ash jumps in. But the rest of the team just kind of chills choke for a few seconds, probably waiting for the bomber. But that should have just been Kozen and maybe Alec, or Kozen and Sizer. But instead, like, four players just chill and choke. So they just lose Ash because they're not supporting him. And show bombs. Okay, so I remember this play. This is very good. Kalman just chills IT and bombs into them because Kozen is by himself. And again, the scouts are isolated here. So this is a perfect play from Hellbent. He's he's gonna... He's gonna get this pick here. I know he did. And they get Ash. So, so, them getting Ash... Them getting Ash there makes it so Hellbent can do this play. And even if he fucks up, it literally doesn't matter at all. If Ash had not died, if he fucks up and beefs the play then maybe this is this could have an after effect if he beefs. But Hellbent's not going to beef it. I remember this. He gets he gets Duwana. Van gets aggressive on that. That was perfect because once they knew Hellbent was in, Van just pushed up. They knew that they were going to panic and write and deal with Van. Like, so Van just supports him there. It's perfect. Hellbent gets two picks. It was a great play. And the 20B push fails. And it's just crazy how little things like that can save, you know, those little plays just end up having such a big effect in an invite match. And the timing was everything, too. Anyways. Um, they're going to stack the point. Stop almost all the spawners. Ash is on spy. So they're just going to push through here. Um, didn't know Ash is on spy. They have full add. So, what they should be doing right now is... So they have two options. They can either push really fast, which I think they kind of missed their oppor... Like, they still have an opportunity right now to push really fast. And then... Catch out 20B before they get a proper defense set up. Or, they play it slow, and then... They spot out the different the defense that 20B is running, whether it's NG, where the gun is, whether it's Pyro, and then they can like think a little more about how they want to use. So let's see how 20B plays this, or how Burn Noises plays this, and whether Ash is going to do anything. That was funny right there. He just fucking jumped on his head and didn't realize. And us. So it looks like he's going to get the stab. Like, so... Honestly, this is so bad. This is so bad. Like, the gun gets set up. Like, they missed their chance because they started, like, stalling a little bit in lobby. Like, they were chilling and stuff, and they didn't fully come in or whatever. And so they're using right away without, like, even scouting at all. Like, they didn't scout where the gun was. So they're leading with a vol. They're leading with a soldier into a gun. And the soldier is jumping and not focusing on spamming that. So now this, this Uber is gonna be terrible absolutely awful and not only that they lost one to ash so now they don't even have six pushing last and i think ash does go down yeah they go down but that's look at that so because ash got that kill two players turned around two players turned around and ash actually prevents two people three people from even entering the fight such a little thing just made this fight more in 20b's favor 
And they rush the Uber. And they get the gun, but this isn't gonna work. There's like I'd be shocked if it oh okay, this is working. I'd be shocked if this works. But the blob and heals from like Brunois is just superior right now, so this is gonna work, I think. Yeah, they just like I'm gonna just describe what happened there. Like the spam from Bird Noises was just better than the spam from 20B, even though 20B had positional advantage there, technically speaking, and the defender's advantage. And you can just see 20B slowly backing away the more damage they take, the more damage they take, and the more ground uh, Bird Noises is taking. So they have to give up the point, and then suddenly they're in a corner, and then they pressure the point with, with who was that, like, Vand? Yeah, it was Vand, or Link, someone on the point. Pressure the point, and then that forces them to not take a favorable fight. They have to pressure the point, otherwise they'll capture, and then they drop players. And then they're going to win this round. So, a lot of it, like, to put this into perspective, this is why I think Brunoises has a lot of potential, and they could have won that. Is because these are a lot of little mistakes that are adding up, yet they even still won this round. That just goes to show, if they had been playing these scenarios correctly, they could have very easily won this Convincingly, in my opinion. Okay, next mid here. I'm just gonna get a good uh, bird's eye view here. And let's just see how the mid plays out. So, Sai's gonna go right. Duwan is gonna get the kit. So, Demoland playing here is alright. If you wanna like push this lane where Duan is sitting, but the main problem is that you don't have good sight where Sai is playing. So basically he can't spam anyone that's like playing in that little kind of like, um, what's it called, dip, where the grass is between the rock, very effectively, because it's kind of blind spam, instead of him being able to see where these players are and where they're holding. And if he goes too deep here, he can get caught out. So, right now, Sai's probably going to get end up here. He's going to start hard spamming. But 20B should react and then push like this and then take this ground here and avoid all of uh, Sai's spam. So, Duan is aggro. He, look at this positioning from Duan. He just, he just like, first of all, he gets the early call. Second of all, he's able to take this ground and fort like... When you put a player in an aggressive position, what that does is force the enemy team's player to like deal with you, right? If you send a scout, hold on, I have a mouse, I forgot about that. Uh, when you send a scout, like right here, say you're 20B and you sent a scout, maybe not even Duwatna. Now Vand, in response, has to deal with him. Because if he doesn't, they're just going to chill here and then like they're going to get free spam, they're going to get free positioning. And so... Duwana forces Van to get aggressive and then just backs the fuck up. And then all of a sudden, you know, Van isn't in a position maybe he ideally wants to be. So he backs up though. Again, passive mid. I love the way they have their soldiers set up. I absolutely love it. But the way they have their scouts set up is just horrendous. It's really bad. Like... I don't know why, like, the I like this slow passive start to the mid, but their scouts need to be taking advantage of Look at this, like, there's not even a soldier, there's not even anything here. Like, there's nothing here to stop them. Maybe do want a spam. But they just have nothing on this high ground, which doesn't make sense to me. And they're just going to give 20B again, positioning. 20B is going to take the high ground. The spam is so passive that it doesn't even, it's irrelevant. So, let's watch. Okay. They do eventually get players on high ground. Okay, now they do. Both soldiers bomb. Deep. This is a very good coordinated bomb. And like, even then, like, the scouts are in a position here where that bomb comes from this angle. And they can't shut it down because they're too far back. So the dam they don't do enough damage to like shut it down. And if they coordinate their rockets here, they get these two picks easily. And maybe they trade two, maybe they lose one. But assuming 20B follows up, 
This should be perfect. No! Oh my god. Sai hits a sick pipe on show. They go deep. This just fails. This fails. Now, I will say one thing. They did something differently. Brunoises did something differently that might have saved them from, like, getting shut out here completely, is they did have their scouts here at some point. And the scouts here, like, make it harder for anyone to push this area, generally speaking. Even if, even if like, they're not shooting at them. The presence alone is going to make Alec or Sizer less eager to just run across here. Thankfully, they turned around and just mulched the shit out of players. But you can see, Vand got the Alec pick. If Alec... If, if, like, they had no positioning here and everyone was on the floor like they've always been playing, Alec would have just ran across and, that, and then that pick would have never happened. And then they would have probably actually lost. But they get Alec. And they get Show and Ash. So, well played from Bird Noises. They seem to be taking advantage of high ground. They drop a link to random Duwana pipe, but that's the risk you take with chasing Duwana. Okay, this was really weird to me when 20B did this. In fact, I think this is the most horrible, horrible play I've ever seen out of a team. I don't get what this Uber was at all. Like, why? This makes no sense to me. Uh, the main reason they won that fight was because 20B wasn't close enough to follow up with their soldiers upon like every minute. Yeah, that's exactly, you're right. That's what I was trying to explain. But the reason they weren't is because they couldn't be as, like, this... Again, Alec would have been here had the scouts not been here. You have to understand. And also, like, again, Sai hit a pipe that technically, if he had not hit, those bombs would have gone very differently. But I agree, for the most part. I think 20B wasn't in a position to follow up. But there's a lot of reasons why. And those are the reasons I want to explain. Rather than to say, 20B is in a position to follow up, that doesn't mean a lot to a lot of players. But I want to explain why why that was. So, Anyways, they take this awful Uber. They lose Duana. This is like the worst thing ever I've ever seen in my life. From like a top team. And so they're just going to lose players. And they lose Duana. No one has... I don't get why they're... This, why are you guys just like sitting? You just got Duwatna? I guess like they have better spawns, but you guys should like be kind of probing there. I don't know. I would start probing, start poking, seeing where they're playing. Oh, but maybe that's too over aggressive. But nonetheless, like you did, you didn't almost. I don't know. I guess it still works because Duwatna has to like climb his way back, but. I would have gone a little sooner because by going faster than that you guys actually might intimidate 20b a little bit into giving up positioning but by not 20b can chill and like okay they're not coming yet they're they they can maintain that position if you guys started pressuring early they might be like oh do we want to take this fight do you want us here you know there's a lot of question marks going on that 20b cannot you know so they might back up a little bit and then you guys already have that that uh that ground Okay, but Van's over here. Oh, jeez. Just Va Van's positioning there just wasn't ideal to begin with. He gets show somehow. But I just don't agree with his positioning. Like, when you're doing a push like this, a dry push, you don't want to rush it. You want to play slow. And they had a technical pick in that Duwatna was dead and respawning. I mean, even though he was alive. Uh, but they rushed it, which doesn't make sense. Like... It's a good pick from Van, but because of his positioning as a result of chasing for it, he dies. And now, all of a sudden, they're down a scout. And a scout for a soldier is not a good trait. Because I'd always want the scout. In my opinion. So, this play, this push could go very bad. And it, it will. Just because, look, as soon as Van dies, and then Ash sets up here, there's too much, they're, they're all, all of a sudden there's all this, like, over, they're overwhelmed in so many ways. And so, like, they just can't deal with it. And losing the scout means that they, they can't commit, like, I mean, Link was here, but he was late. So losing Vand means that, like, if Vand was alive the whole time, hypothetically, and then Ash bombed the choke, like... 
If Van was alive, he could have just gone buffed and fucked Ash. And then the soldiers could have stopped the scouts from being aggressive. Problem solved. Honestly, we were probably just rushing that. Or at least I was since before and we agreed we didn't want to give Ash time to go for plays. That makes sense. But the thing is, if you know Ash is going to go for a play, you can just set it up. Like, regardless. Because, like, Ash is a good roamer, but, like, that bomb could have been fucked very easy. It was, like, good because he all of a sudden created this pinch and you guys are, like, split. But, like... If you just lived, you would have died. Like, that little thing, it's so insane that I'm saying that. But, like, that little thing, you living, kills Ash. Ash dies. The soldiers don't need to focus on Ash, so they can just stop the scouts. Link user comes in late. Hellbent's in a good position. Like, all these little things add up. So, anyways. Hellbent goes deep, going for a play. You both go deep. This is good. So, the instant they lose Endus there... They don't want to, like, lose this fight on, like, a bad note where they just have to keep giving up ground. So they commit both soldiers. Sadly, the bombs just didn't work out. But I agree with that play. I think it was the best thing to do at that time. But you kind of, like, you want to be able to have those plays work because now they're even in a worse position. Because they have two options there. They either commit during the fight where it's more chaotic or they try and kill Kozen or get the force, like, when it's less chaotic. But... Both teams have kind of time to set up and plan things out. And in a lot of ways, had both the soldiers lived there, they could have slowed them down just by their presence alone because then Kozen's all of a sudden worried, are they going to bomb me? Where are they? They're going to have to start checking stuff. And then Endus can get up and then they can build and then get Uber and then it all trails back and then they're holding second all of a sudden with full ad. But they lose two in a play that I agree with, but they beefed. So 20B is just going to push through here. Um, Link user is going to get caught out. Actually, no, I remember this. So this is really good from Link user. Like, he just... So, you know, I was talking about the soldiers living and then making them check and stuff and play for time. Link user is doing this right now just by himself. He's playing time. He's giving Endus time to come back up. Whether Link intended to do this or not, this is what he's doing. And all of a sudden, he's forcing players back. And it makes it so... Where maybe 20B would have pushed in more aggressive and faster, they can't because they don't have all their players with them. So all of a sudden, they're giving themselves time for Endus to build. So this might not be a roll. They might not lose this round now. Just based off that little play that Link user did, whether intended or not. So again, they're hard building. This is good, smart. They know Link user's down. So to be honest, they shouldn't try and make another play happen here. They should... Like, I think trying to make this play, whatever, like, if they're going to try and make something happen here, they're going to go down two, and they're just going to flood through with their ad. So they're spamming. So, right here, this is good that they're spamming, but they're spamming in the worst position possible. Like, the only way where Vol is playing is good, or even Hellbent, is if they decide to go IT, but nothing's IT. And they should be spotting it so that they know nothing is IT. And then these players can rotate and then start spamming choke. Like, they should have just been roll up or point or even, like, shutter. And then spam these guys as they come through, right? But instead, they have this really passive spam that won't accomplish very much. Ash does a bomb and gets caught out. They get one pick. So right now, the one pick is now... This is where a player can die. Because then it's a trade. So... Hellbunt is probably going to die. Or he's going to get another pick. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. He sh so, Halbun is behind. and Okay, 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 okay. What Van did... Okay, I thought he was committing. Never mind. I, I stand corrected. I thought you were going to commit there. But, alright, never mind. I'm not going to talk about that then. Van is very lucky he didn't die there. Okay, so... They played it... Wrong. Like... Number one, Vandover extends there. I didn't think he was going to die because he backed out real soon. Vandover extends there when Helben is behind. Now, hypothetically, if Van commits and dies, Helben is still behind. And say even if like they get the force, they drop Helben as well, hypothetically. And then so these players, now 20B, just go in and they get the force on last with Ad. Hello, Mojo. Um, but they drop Van... 
And Vol look at Vol's, where Vol is playing right now. I don't, like, there must have been some really bad miscommunication. Like, someone from Bruno says, please tell me that that's what it was. Because you guys are just like, Vol's going to die. And if he doesn't, I'll be shocked. Hellbent's going to die. And if he doesn't, I'll be shocked. So all of a sudden, you're three dead, holding last with not even Uber. Which is the worst position you can be in. So Vanover extends. I would say that's bad luck that he died. I wouldn't blame him. I think he played it right, where he just backed up right away. Because he couldn't get the med. But it was bad luck. But now, all these other players are now going to die. Most likely. Okay, this is okay. They get the force. That's alright. That's the best thing they can do there. They get the force early. But they're still going to lose both these players. And Endus might have Uber, but it doesn't matter. Because they're three dead. And these players are now just going to walk in, pressure... Like, okay, so this is what I would do. Knowing that we had to use early, if I'm 20B, knowing that we had to use early, and we're going to about to get, like, a bunch of picks, I would say, okay, they might have been building, they might get close to Uber. They're only three up. When they're three up, you don't commit to these players. You don't commit to the three players. You commit to the point. This is what 20B should do, and this will really fuck bird noises from trying to do anything, assuming Endos gets his Uber. Because what you can do is you can just slap Alec on the point. There's not enough spam or pressure to like even stop him. And then Endus is forced to use right away just to stop the point alone. And then 20B kites out. And then they just come back in and win the round. But let's see how this plays out. So 93, 95. Hellbent slows him down, but he's still dead. And they're going to come in with good health here or whatever. Good, 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 good. Alec gets on point. And then all of a sudden, all the attention, because there's so few players, is diverted. Now, honestly, I would say what Brunoises could do here to potentially win. But honestly, they're just literally in the worst position possible. And I don't think there's any way they could make this better than it is. Like, outside of, like, I guess what they could have tried to do is instead of committing to Alec here, who's a scout and can easily just, like, get the fuck out and run away, they should have used their Uber... Because they know that Kozen used. It should have been called. So their Uber's going to fade. They should have used their Uber here to catch out all these players here. And get these last minute, like, last second frags. Van's going to spawn soon. Hellbun and Vol are going to spawn soon. But instead, they use their Uber to chase Alec, who's probably not even going to die. Yeah. And look at this. Look at this positioning that's all of a sudden being taken. Alec lives. And these guys here, who could have been picks, get to live. And even though, like... 20B are playing it slow and they're able, like, Burners are able to get spawned. I don't see this ending well because of the position here. They're just all gonna come in once the Uber fades. Here we go. Showstopper's above. He's just gonna sit and spam. Van goes down. And it should just collapse from here, I'm assuming. Yeah, Helmet, Vol's weak. Vol's gonna go down. Hmm, interesting. So, again, some nice frags coming out of Bird Noises. I think that's because. Like, Showstopper was behind, and Duana was, like, in front here. Like, Duana was in front of everyone, but there wasn't enough aggression from the whole 20B team to fuck them in this corner when Show was here. So Show's lit. All they need to do is turn around and start shooting at him. He dies. Duana's a little isolated. Shoot at him. He dies. It was good focus. So they do save that. But from the get-go, they should have killed... They should not have chased Alec. They should have just focused on these guys here. Focused on the group of players. Because then you have more opportunity to save the round. So I'll say they got lucky there, but it was good focus nonetheless. So, Ash slows them down a little bit. I'm like Link users here. So they're going to get captured. They have a very insignificant add. And 20B are not going to opt to pressure at all. So pop early aggressively to make sure push, pushing players die and reduce the player advantage. Then they have an easier time defending versus just using the Uber to stop the guy. Yeah, that's exactly it. Because Alec would have been stopped anyway because there were stickies on the point. He just wanted to tap it and then divert their attention, which worked. But they should have focused like, like maybe Psy didn't have to shoot those guys and maybe Psy could have worried about Alec. But they should have just killed those guys on the left. Like that would have just been the best case scenario because Vound's up in one second. Hellbents and them are up in like 
five or whatever. I mean, that's best case scenario. But again, a lot of things can go wrong. So here we go. I think Endes is aware of his small ad. It actually went from insignificant to like 20, 30. So they're going to push in here. But again, like pushing on these small ads, you don't want to slow push. And s going through a place like Choke, I don't know, like it's good, but it's a slow push. So like this ad's not going to matter in the end. Because, okay, let's actually check something out here. I, I need to see this. Is there anyone who's... Okay, no stickies IT. No stickies IT. I don't even think there's stickies sewer. I don't even think the one has a trap. Okay, there's a trap right there. So, because their ad is so small, Burmers just have to play. Like, cause the, it's not going to get them the point. This Uber advantage is not going to get them middle. There's no way. I'd be shocked. They have to play aggressive where they can get picks with their Uber and catch these guys out. Assuming that's like they actually want to do something with their Uber and not just reset. Because they're, basi they're basically pushing on nothing right now. Essentially, because this ad is so insignificant. The only way it works is if they double soldier IT or double soldier sewer. So, in my opinion, they're playing it wrong. They're playing the small ad wrong. So again, Kozen's just slowly building, show bombs, no one's really dying from 20B, Van goes down, they get Sizer, like, and now Kozen has Uber, and so this push is just bad, all of a sudden, and Endust is fucked, he's gonna get forced, 20B use, I don't know why, Alex behind, like, this is just... Again, I want to emphasize there, you have to play different advantages with different classes and different entrances. A lot of players don't think about how, ev like a lot of players are just like, oh, let's just push through the most convenient entrance. But sometimes the most convenient entrance is the one that will make your play worse. You got to think about how the different entrances in which you use and come through matter in, in the grand scheme of things. IT is good. If you want to get more positioning right off the bat. Because, again, IT, you're going to come out of there. And already you've covered half of mid without even doing anything. The problem with IT, however, is you 90% of the time have to use early. But that's okay if you take both soldiers and either get a fuck ton of positioning or kill them all. And then you have the rest of the team flood in from choke and or IT. And then it works out fine. Choke is good because you have all this ground to cover. You have to be very aware of the maps in order to like make the play. If they're holding IT, then you just walk through choke. If they're holding choke, like it just really depends on what you want to do. But these are the little things that like a lot of people don't think about in Ubers. They're just like, okay, we we have Uber ad. Let's just take it in the most convenient way and let's try and kill them. But you have to think about how the Uber is going to play out. So. Here we are. Burn noises are down to Alex gonna get caught out, so that's pretty good. He's just not in a good position, and 20 are just gonna opt to not commit there. So right now it's even even Ubers. Vol wants to go. Okay, so I remember saying this during the stream. Vol shouldn't have been the first one in in this push. Because it's too easy for him to be focused down right away. Like Look at this, like, no one is in any position to help him. Van shouldn't, no, I guess they got Link. I think Link's combo, scout. I'm not sure. But it should have been one of the scouts running through and making the space, because then the scout can jump in, pressure Duana, back up. Vol now needs to jump in. He's going to land, take a fuck ton of damage, because number one, soldiers in the air, they're shooting at him while he's in the air, they're shooting at him while he's landing, they're shooting him as he lands, they're going to shoot him as he jumps away. He's going to die. And if he doesn't, he's going to be so low, he's an insignificant player in the fight. So they should have led with a scout here if they wanted to do this dry push, which I think is not a bad play. It's different. It takes teams off guard. Maybe they're not ready for it. And obviously, Duana didn't even have a trap and choke, really. He had, like, two stickies. So they just run the scout through. The scout runs through, pressures Duana, because look how isolated he is, kind of. Not really anyone who can help him. So scout runs through. Vol jumps in after. Scout backs up to heals. So they create this cycling dynamic. 
Anyways. Yeah, so Vol's just... Yeah, look at that. He's low, and... I don't know. Like... I don't know. Like, Vol should have died earlier. 20B just... Play it wrong. Van gets a good kill on Duwatna, but he dies for it. But that's still a good trade demo. Duwatna for Van? That is good, in my opinion. So... They're gonna push through off that demo pick. They get a second pick. Well played from Bird Noises. One thing they did that was really important here is they had pressure from all different entrances. Which, in any push, especially dry pushes, is super effective. You have players coming from here, you have players coming from here, and you have players coming from here. That splits a defending team's attention all of a sudden. Now they have to like choose which fights they want to take. And if they are not coordinated, they're all going to take different fights. And they're not going to be able to focus anything down. And then they just have to leave or die. So Bird Noises comes in. They get Kozen. Beautiful play. This is perfect for them right now. And they're going to go IT. Which... I mean, it doesn't matter because there's so many dead. But IT is a place, again where there's potential for this push to be fucked completely. If like there's an aggressive player, like say like Sho was not here, but he was like up there on that little awning. And then they all flood through IT and then all of a sudden Sho just drops on Enda's face and they don't check it, right? It's just, it's setting it up for bad, a bad push. But they're gonna go through here. And like, again, Showstopper backs out. It doesn't really do anything. But again, look, I don't even think any of them checked up there. But I guess Endus delays enough where it's okay. I still don't agree with this, in my opinion. I think I'd rather just them walk through choke and then spot everything out. Because you never know if there's a hider or anything like that. Okay, I just missed that. But uh, again, this is kind of what happens when you are not looking for things when you're pushing last. Like, I mean, it was bad luck. He took the peak as the player cross so they didn't know but like the goal like you guys know you have full ad the goal here should just be to recognize okay they're not just gonna sit and chill this isn't a netflix and last hold chill all right this isn't what they're gonna do 20 is a good team they're not just gonna sit there and do nothing they're gonna try and make something happen so the things you gotta be looking out for sniper spy they might have a sentry. They might have a heavy. You guys have to acknowledge and peek these things ahead of time. Because otherwise you're going to get fucked by a play like this. Because you're not thinking about it. You're not thinking. I'm sure you guys were like, oh, we're about to get around. We're about to get around. Let's push, push, push. Because you're getting excited. You're about to win this round. You know, this is an intense match. But sometimes you just got to like be level-headed, clear your mind, and just think, what could the possible potential plays here be? And one of them fucked you guys over because you weren't like, trying to look for it or whatever and now you don't have ad and Kozen's just gonna build up and you can't do anything so that could that was a round right there hypothetically that was a round win but being impatient and rushing things cost you guys what happened there I Van goes down. I don't know what happened there, but I imagine you were far too overextended considering you should have expected them to push. And they're gonna dry push before the Uber here. Because uh, Burnoises has no heals, which is smart. Burnoises loses one, they trade one. So, scout for scout on each team. Kozen has advantage here. Burnoises. Burnoi. Board? Board noises. <laughs> Burnoises has to hold uh, middle here and try and get a force as they come in. So, this is the goal here. So. So again, they're one down, and the difference here between what I called earlier when you're one down and it's even ubers is that you can hold aggro and still have an uber. Now because you're at an uber disadvantage, you can't do that. You have to hold passive. You have no choice. Now this is good. Hellbent on top right, Vol on top here, Trap on Choke, etc, etc. So this is good. This is very good. 20B are going to beef this because they're going to go IT for some godforsaken reason. This doesn't make sense. Like, I mean, they might still have a good Uber if 
Um, Burnoise just doesn't kite properly, but honestly, going through IT is just not the right play here because you're going to expect them to... That's the easiest place to force from. And they have... Again, you know how I was saying earlier, IT is good when you... Like, it's the best... If you're going to push on a 25 ad, you need to go IT. You can't push through choke because then you lose it. But they have such a huge ad here. Kozen has a 70% advantage. And he's going to push on that huge of an ad through the place where he has to use right away. Which doesn't make sense. He should be going through choke. So, they get the call. Hellman! Okay, so, number one, Hellman shouldn't have just ran away there. Like, he's a roamer. He can stand here even if they're walking through and spam the fuck out of them and then just jump out. Very easily. Now they're gonna get in a little- they're gonna get a little bit more time before they have to force. And then Hellman's gonna get caught, maybe- nope! No, good kiting, good kiting, perfect kite. They're going IT because they're down one, I guess? That doesn't make sense. If you're down one, you don't wanna like... I don't know, it just doesn't make sense. Like, there's no logical reason for them to go IT there. Outside of like, just, again, going through the most convenient entrance. They were technically closer to IT when they captured the point, so they're just gonna go IT. But that cost them. That Literally nothing else happened there, but the fact that they went IT. That's literally it. That little thing. Okay. So here we are. Bird Noises has add. So one thing they need to be ready here for, every team needs to be ready for when you have advantage and you don't have it yet and neither team has it yet you need to set up for a potential dry push if you do not set up for a potential dry push they're going to catch you off guard and your, your advantage might not go to waste you might get caught out you might just be forced out of the point whatever so if they're not prepared for any kind of dry push to happen and 20b does dry push they're going to get fucked So size really aggro and choke. Yeah, okay. It looks like they're setting up for a dry push here. They're they're ready for like potential dry push, maybe. And now they're gonna start moving on their app. So again, an important thing to do that even my own team fails to do sometimes is scoping out before you push any kind of point. Like whatever. Like it doesn't matter. So right now, like I would rather because okay, number one. I would rather Van peak choke as a scout, kind of solo. And Shrugger would definitely do this. Like, if it was Shrugger playing, Shrugger wouldn't be in sewer. He wouldn't be IT. Shrugger would be in choke. And what he's going to do is he's going to jump in. He's going to draw eyes all of a sudden. Oh, we can't just let this scout run up for free through this lane. So all of a sudden, Ash is going to start shooting in there. Now, with that... Shrugger will also scope out where they're playing and before this t before burn noises like gets a chance to like Push on their ad they're gonna get a good call on where they are so they know how they want to play this now considering how passive 20b is and considering how big the ad is going sewer or I or or, or or choke is the best play but again there's better ways to play this, and I would rather see a scout run through the choke because that creates more of a distraction and makes it harder for them to spam 100%. Instead, it's side poking. Like. So, you might think, well, why are they focusing all their spam sewer? Because of one scout. Like. And uh, you might say, well, they should have gone choke because they're all spamming sewer. Now, the thing is here, they can guess where they're going to go just based off the fact that Ash over here doesn't see anything. Ash can just make a call. They're probably going sewer. Ash also saw, Ash also saw them cross. So all of a sudden, they know that the push is going sewer. And it's so easy to stuff this push. So ideally, they run the scout through choke. They have the rest of the team follow up. Hellbent shouldn't be IT. He should be going sewer because IT just gets fucked no matter what. Like, they could have played that a lot better and now they're just going to get fucked by this spam, I think. Yeah, see, they're forced to use right away, which they don't want to do. 
on this big of an advantage. They want to try and maybe milk it more and get the point. And then Sai is just like chilling and choke. Like, so all those things added up. You guys should have noticed when you were rotating that Ash had sight of you and you're going to get spotted and you, you know they're going to focus all your spam. So what you can do is either rotate, acknowledge that he called you, and then rotate back to choke because now they're going to adjust their positions to spam you. But anyways. Ooh. Okay, so they use their Uber. They're trying to get the capture last second, which is the best thing they can do. And I love the positioning here from all of these Burn Rises players. It's very easy for both these soldiers to kite out. But they should be jumping, like, right now. And Link user might get caught if you back that sir. So they're playing the spam. They get Ash. Oh, this is beautiful right now. So that was good at Burn Noises. They isolated the players on the left and focused them down because they had no heals. And these guys were being stalled by the spam because Kozen, being typical Kozen, didn't want to use there. And it was the right thing to do to not want to use because look at where Endust is. But they're going to drop two. Hellbent's going to die and Vand is going to commit to a play. I think Van got over eager. I think they did beautiful thing there by getting those picks, but Van got over eager and tried to force something else to happen. But he should have settled for just that and then been like, okay, let's back out. We got two picks. That'll slow him down. Let's just build out the rest of our Uber, right? But they drop three, and now all those picks they got are irrelevant. So all that good work, all that good play goes to nothing. And 20B are just going to come in here with advantage. After, I, I don't know why they're stacking, but I guess it, they do want to cap it faster. So, capping it faster means they get to push faster and their spawners get there. It's not so much about shutting down the other spawners. So, they're going to walk through here. They have full advantage. They're just going to bully them out because Burn Noises is playing passive because they want to secure the Uber. So, I mean, they could play aggro, but it's probably too much of a risk. Because you never know if they had pushed earlier or not. So playing passive is good. Hellbent is now actually in a perfect position. Let's see. Does Kozen see him? Kozen does see Hellbent. But Hellbent is going to have the jump on him pretty much. And he's going to go in. He, he makes him use. What the fuck was... I don't know when he popped up Kozen. I don't know what Hellbent was looking at over there. Like, Kozen didn't have to pop there. Actually, based on that, because he didn't even go for Kozen. I think he might have known that they used, though. So maybe that's why he was just trying to force a flash. I'm not sure. But this is weird. So I just saw this. Hellbent goes for the force. This is miscommunication, without a doubt. No doubt in my mind. Because, okay, let's think about it this way. Hellbent goes for the play. If Hellbent is calling, he goes for the play they don't use here because there's no reason to because there's just it doesn't make sense you're popping an uber into an uber you're an invincible versus invincible fight is kind of retarded i'm just not gonna lie and the ubers are gonna roughly fade when uh at the same time almost and they're already down one this is not good so what they should have done there they either should have not sent in Hellbent for the force and just waited to get the Uber to recontest the point. But even then, that's a bad idea. Because again, when you recontest the point from a position like this, or like this passive, while they have all this ground, like, you're just, again, you're putting yourself, you're taking an unfavorable fight from the get-go. What they should have done, in my opinion, is I think Hellbent going for that play was correct, but they should not have popped right away. I don't know why that was happening. Hellbent goes for the play. He calls they used. Endus just needs to wait a little bit. And then he can come back in. Like they can just wait here. They can chill here. Netflix and chill in all these areas. They don't have to force it. They just chill. Wait for the Uber to kind of start going a little bit. And then they counter pop in. When 20B are going to be in this position. Okay, so let's go. 
This Uber is not going to do anything. It's not going to accomplish anything. All it does is like make 20B back up a little bit, but because of the pick that 20B had, they're just going to retake the ground. So it's kind of depressing. They, they, all, a lot of lost opportunities here from, from bird noises to like have good Ubers, good plays. 20B are just going to come in here, dry push on the right, which I like. Aggression is always good. And just the amount of ground they take and the way they're playing their heels is good, but bird noises do the correct thing when they're doing a dry push and they have their soldiers bomb all the way into here and taking this position, which basically isolates these players and does a shit ton of damage here and then they hold it. So that was good. I think Kozen goes down though. So again, now they have another opportunity to push out. Let's see how they approach it. They're pushing out a last. They're, the other team is too dead. How did they work it? Okay, so Van's gonna get off heavy. Ash is hiding on the right. And what is 20B doing? 20B is like out. They're, they're just completely out. So Ash is gonna trade. That's all right. They're too dead now. Now with this knowledge, bird noises need to like. They're too dead for the one dead. And Bird Noises need to acknowledge that potential pressure might come out based off that. And here's the pressure, just a little bit of spam, a little bit of poking. But because Hellbent respawns fast enough, it's irrelevant. And then this doesn't do anything. 20B is not going to do anything. Stay full out here. They're, they're taking their time. And they're going to go IT again. This I don't understand why these teams... Like, both 20B and both Bird Noises are pushing through IT when they have a bigger add. IT is a good push. Hold on, where's show? IT is a good push when you have a small advantage and you're trying to go deep. But you have a big advantage right now. And if 20B are playing it correctly, they're going to force you early, Kozen's going to kite, and then you've wasted your bigger advantage. And you're not doing anything with it. When they should be taking this like 50%, 60% advantage and going choke and using their advantage to kind of force them out. Because, okay, if Kozen is close to Uber and they go choke, Kozen's going to stay. If Kozen is farther away from Uber and he's, and he's close to choke, like, and then Andas pushes choke, what's going to happen is... He's gonna start. They're gonna start slowly kiting because they're not close to Uber yet. They don't want to risk it. But now they're gonna go IT. Kozen's gonna get the early call. He's just gonna get the fuck out. Although I think you, know, you said Kaido bomb incoming, so this might work out because Asai does a crazy thing. So again, they use right away, instant kite. Okay, that played out well. Kozen was not in the position that I expected him to be. And now let me explain. I think that worked. The reason why that worked is because they did it fast enough. But I don't know. Like, I still don't agree with it. I'm glad it worked. And they did go really deep, but Kozen was in a bad position there. Like, that's reliant on their players being in a bad position, which isn't really, like, that's not how you want to play at a, at a high level. That could have gone very bad and done nothing. And Psy might have died if like Kozen completely kited and Psy bombed. But that was still good. They they made it work. But you guys need to know that you only won that because Kozen made a mistake and out of position. Not because that was a good play. So they kill Kozen. They have Ad here. Alex just... What the heck is going... So Alex just gets a stray pick. Not much to say about that. And then Hellbent dies to a trap. So they're losing players. But that doesn't matter because they still have advantage. So they don't need to rush a push. Um, what else here? Okay, so off those two picks, this is very smart. 20B are just flooding in off the two picks, knowing that they might not have Uber yet. So this is the best thing that 20B could do right now. And they have no choice but to kite because they're too dead. They're not going to win this spam battle. They can't. They have no positioning to like stuff them. They're already through, so they just have to back out. This is perfect. And Endus gets caught out. Oh my goodness. 
So again, when you go players down like that, you don't like you have to think about what they can do. Like even if they don't do it, it's pretty clear there that based on the positioning, you guys weren't ready for 20B to just start flooding through off the two picks, but you guys lost two. And if I'm the other team, if I'm going to want to push off those two picks. I'm going to want to make something happen. Even if it's not like a full push, maybe I'll make a play. Like, it doesn't matter. And so the positioning from Endust is, like, bad because he's, you guys aren't ready for it. And you're going to lose two. So your ad is gone all of a sudden. Because you guys didn't... Well, at least from, my, from what it looks like, you guys didn't seem to be ready for that push. Hey, so... They're just going to walk in with heals here, 20B. Again, not enough spam, not enough classes here to like even do anything to them, do any damage at all on entry here. And the add is so significant, even if Endus builds here, it's not going to really, like, they're just going to last. The No matter what happens, they go to last here. Unless 20B just send them free picks. However, the best thing that can happen is Hellbent can playmake. Or they spam them when they come through. So, and then they get the Uber. So what are they going to do here? What, what's 20B going to do? Okay, they're going to go through Choke, it looks like. And this is building pretty hard. Duan is through. Again, they're in a bad position to spam Choke. All they need, sorry, excuse me. All they need is Hellbent to just chill in IT and look. But until then, Vol doesn't play here. He only plays there if he gets the call, their IT, because that the spam angle here is like too narrow. Like Kozen can just get through. I don't know. I just don't agree with it. I think they should be playing with like a soldier here or a soldier here or a soldier here. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like Halbent, like they get the call IT. I don't know. There's just not enough spam. So might as well not be spamming. Like Vol should just bomb. And actually that wouldn't even be a bad idea. Just look at this right now. This bomb would be perfect. He just bombs around and then gets Kozen. That would actually be a perfect bomb. But this spam is like irrelevant. It's not doing anything. And so they're just going to walk through. Vol backs up. Hellbent is like caught out. Kind of. Well, you know, he doesn't get. He doesn't actually die for it. He doesn't get punished or anything. And 20B are just going to walk in. And you know what? They did the worst thing possible. They didn't make them use. So now they lose. Assuming 20B plays it right. And like... They had two options there. They either commit all their spam into getting the force, or they commit a player into getting the force. They did neither. They just sat back and were afraid and tried to build Uber. Which I just, I don't think that's the right play to do. And so Show's just going to come in, go fast with this Uber while they're leaving one on cap. Burn noises are kiting right now. So, look at this. They have no players out, and... 20B, once the scouts, or like maybe even Ash, they're just going to send a player on the point. Yep, sending a player on the point. All of a sudden, Burn Noises are forced to come out against their will. And then, essentially, like, what's it called? What am I looking at when I talk? I, I'm, I, I'm just looking at my screen. But essentially, um, because it, it's weird for me to look at the camera, I hope you guys don't mind, but, uh, essentially, Brunoises are forced in a position, forced to come out of spawn, and this works perfectly, because 20B are set up for that, and they're just going to focus down all these players, no positioning, and then this is, uh, this is going to work out here. <laughs> Do you want it goes down? What the heck? Okay, that's pretty clear that, um, 20B might have gotten a little cocky there. And just assumed they were going to win. And Duwana just goes down for no reason. If Duwana had lived, and then, um... They could have just won that fight based off the heals. But Duwana just, like, chills on point and then dies. Because they were getting cocky about that. But in theory... Burn Rizzi should have gotten fucked. But the one thing to keep in mind there is even though 20 
B beef the push. Kozen still has that. Okay. So they have ad. Tony B are definitely gonna try and push off this. Okay, they run through. So Tony B also does a bad thing here. They're doing the same thing where they're not scouting it out. They use the Uber through rollout and they might not even get the gun. Problem is the positioning from Burger Noises is bad. So Um they're gonna lose players, and this shit Uber at first, like, is actually gonna do something. Vol goes down early, Van's gonna die, and Endust is gonna die. I remember seeing this. You guys were playing, like, two, two forward before you had Uber. And as a result, you get caught out by this small ad push from Kozen. If you guys had just played a little bit more passive and waited for your Uber... You could have, like, they would have used, you would have had an infinitely better Uber, you would have caught out all these guys right here, it would have been perfect. But instead you guys are t holding too aggressively and you get caught out, because you're not ready for the push. And this gun here might think, oh, it's going to save us the round, but it's actually irrelevant once you lose that many players. Because now, you lose two, 20B are going to do the smart thing here, play it slow, they're not even going to overcommit or anything. They're just going to get the gun, they're going to play it slow, they're going to mulch you guys down. They're going to chip you guys down just with their heals and numbers. And look at that. See? You guys are just going to get killed here. And that's going to be the end of the first half. After this awkward fight. <laughs> so. Wait, is that first half? No, it's not. We got one more round. So here we go, another mid. Okay, so again, standard mid, beautiful. Bird noises, getting high ground. This is nice. Do you want is isolated here? So what I would like to see in my ideal um, kind of play or push here. You have one scout up top. You have one scout playing the floor. The scout playing the floor stops any ground aggression. The demo man plays on the floor here with the scout. The, the soldiers being here is nice and good. I'd rather have Hellbent like right here. And then Vol can stay there. And then S place heals there. And then either they can pressure Duwana or pick him. Because look how isolated he is from the rest of his team. Look at that. He just has... Okay, he backs up eventually, but again, if there was a scout there from the start, you might have been able to just kill him. So Ash is in IT. Vol gets caught out by him. And I just don't think that bomb accomplishment accomplished much. He like bombed onto the kit. I guess that was okay because he wanted to rebomb. But anyway, so Vol dies. Ash comes in. Showstopper comes in. So they shut down those bombs good they killed them before 20b had a chance to support so now they they shut the bombs down and then i don't what i don't understand is they're not they're giving up ground and splitting up which is not what they should be doing like first of all they backed up after they got the kill even though their health was like almost completely fine they just all start holding s like they're afraid and then as they start coming out, they split up. There's like players here, there's player there was a player here before he died, and then there's players here. You guys aren't taking team fights all of a sudden. Link user gets out. Link user should have just stayed in. I mean I know he's trying to get the kit there, but then you guys use like this is so messy. Like you didn't have to force that Uber there. Um and then, okay, they're too dead, you're too dead. You guys are going to dry push. Yeah, this, this is good. You have numbers on the mid. You notice that. But basically, you guys 
could have like easily just won that like way more convincingly if you just didn't have a player here have a player here have a player here you just all play together in a blob and then push together and then didn't use that uber you're underestimating hellbent's positioning there the thing is hellbent is good there if they like like it's good spam but it's almost irrelevant spam in a way like it stops them from reaching this point, but it does nothing here. Yeah, exactly. It seems shitty though, since Van and Linkies aren't getting high ground on that. That's what I, like it. If I'm gonna look at a, a, a deep kind of analysis of like what Hellbent was doing wrong, like he wasn't really doing anything wrong there, but because of how the team was playing, he needs to players need to be doing different things. And in my opinion, that's an ideal mid. And the reason I would say I don't want him there is because it's easy to just counter spam him. Like, if I'm a soldier or anything, I can just shoot rockets at that wall and then he's being spammed. And then either Endos has to rotate to heal him and stop healing other people, or Hellbent just gets out of the fight and then is not a factor. I would just spam that wall if Hellbent's going there every time. So, you guys. What I'm seeing here is you guys are like committing to the push, but instead of going fast enough to shut down those, like get the players when you do have numbers at, you take too long and then they get spawners. And now, now you guys are just going to lose this fight. You need to just get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Stop committing. Just get all the way out. You, you missed your chance. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> those soldiers bomb in, good soldier aggression. They're just going to flood through here, and you guys aren't, like, weren't ready for the dry push there. You guys weren't ready for that. And I mean, that's a result of, like, I think your scouts were, like, playing over here, kind of kitey, and not forward to where they could stop the bombs and focus down the soldiers on entry. And then Psy gets caught out. If Psy had lived there, Psy could have just spammed them as they came through while the scouts deal with the soldiers, and then Vol also spams from here onto them. But you guys aren't in good positions to counter it, and it's gonna cost you. So, Halbent gets a trade, they're two dead, you're three dead. Ubers are even, you have, you're just gonna go back to last, okay. Okay. So, even Ubers, you're still Halbent down. Ash is on sniper. So this is just gonna be kind of Ash, sniper, and chill. Let's just speed it up a little bit here. Defense from Burnoise. This is an engineer, it looks like. And. Ash is. What the? He's taking his sweet ass time. So right now, this is when they figure out he has running sniper. So now they know he's running sniper, they shouldn't be playing this. Like, I feel like they're playing this passive because of sniper, but I think this is the worst thing you can do when they have a sniper. Because when you give up that much ground, this guy can just walk in. Like, and they can just push with heals and slow push on the right, even if there is a gun. Like, all of a sudden you guys have no spam on them. Or, what the hell? That's weird. So, like, they can... You guys are really passive here, and it's giving him space. Like, if he just peeked out on the left here, he'd be fine. He could get, like, the freest shots in the world. Alec goes down, and it's okay. But if you're holding last, and you know there's a sniper, have your med right here, between these two areas, and just have players make sure that he can't get a peek out from either of these entrances, and then have the rest of, of your team hold these doors. That's the best way to play it, rather than give them all that space. So anyway, you guys get Alec. You still have running sniper. Not really anything you guys can do. You guys are like taking far too long to even push here. Poking and prodding, so... <clears throat> you guys are just gonna not push and hold last. Okay, let's see what else happens here. They're just... W okay, they have Ash back on Soldier. I think this is where they're gonna run a double suicide. Okay, you guys actually did do end up what I'm saying here. 
but they're not running a sniper anymore. So now this could be really bad. It's like bad luck because they stopped running a sniper that you're playing here. But this is going to hurt you guys now because they don't have a sniper. And so like if they are aware of Endus positioning there, it's the easiest force in the world. Especially considering like Hellbent is the only one that's really pressuring lobby right now. So like Hellbent just gets spammed out and then they come in. So let's see this. I know there's a force that comes out here from two players. So, Ash Bomb's in to the sentry. Okay, so actually, oh, this is, okay, no, the force didn't come up. So, thankfully they didn't know you guys were there, but you can see how far they got in. So, it's kind of like risky, but of course you guys didn't know that he switched it off, so that's not your fault. You use through here, you lose one. So right there, Hellbent shouldn't have peaked before you guys Ubered. Like, that was just risky, like maybe... Like, just wait until the uber goes off here, because it has to be a solo no matter what. Like, you can't have a favorable uber pushing out a last on two picks without, like, if you, now you're going to lose one, and you're going to lose two. Both those players committed when they should not have. And now Vol's going to go. So you lose two because you didn't let Vol just take his solo, and like, yeah, now you lose three. This is going to be around right now. There's no way this isn't. Move the gun. That was good to move the gun, but it's going to be irrelevant because, like, nah, they want a spot set. You lose the gun, they're just going to push through here. No, no stickies on point. So he gets on point, all of a sudden everyone panics. So look at the point, look at the point. Alec comes in from left as a result, and then they just get on cap and win the round. That's the first half, so let's skip all this shit. We're actually close to getting done here, squadron. Because I think these next few rounds are really fast. Alert. The control point is being contested. Alert. The control point is being captured. Alert. The alert. I'll go a little quicker because it seems to be a lot of the same mistakes every time that are just building up here. So I won't pause as much probably unless I see something different. Damn, these rounds must have gone fast. Okay. Okay. Let's go check out this middle. Okay, here. So... Duan is just trying to trade some stickies there. Sai's got a good position on the right. Ash is in IT. Okay, I like this. I like this a lot. I love where Hellbent is playing right now. I like it a lot better than the awning. Because, again, of course, you know how you're mentioning the he, he can get the spam? He can still get that spam upper from there. But he's naturally in a harder position for him to get spammed and a, more, a, a better position to also be aggressive, which I like. And again, this is beautiful. Oh my god, they're playing my middle, just like how I called it. It's like, I, it's like you guys knew. Halbin over here in this area. Van playing high ground. Vol still on the rock. Link user playing the floor. You guys are like, this is great. Look at all this ground you guys are getting. This is perfect. This is a good early mid. Duan is so passive and isolated. This is actually really good middle from you guys. Okay, you, you're paying too much attention to Ash. This is bad. Really bad. Um... Because Ash is doing nothing there. If you don't pay attention to him, he does nothing. If you pay attention to him, he does something. I would much rather, when damage is getting called on Duwatna, and you know he's a lone choke, just have Hellbent bomb him right away. Get that pick, and then Hellbent is now in this position where they're now worried about him and scared. And then the rest of you guys can get aggressive and collapse from there, and then he bombs in. But now you gave Ash too much attention and actually made him useful. And you lose Vol. And because of that, you guys don't aren't able to get aggressive, and you completely kite out, and you're just going to lose players, showstoppers pinching you. Thankfully, you guys are going to hopefully get completely out. So, that's good. Okay, so you know that numbers are roughly even. So you know they should, they're going to be poking and prodding. But again, look at this. You guys are committing the Ash like he wasn't there for a reason. Like, I know it's good to get that pick, 
But you guys all give up your positioning to commit to Ash as if he's trying to do like some weird solo play. But if he's a smart player, he's not going to be doing that without something else happening from the rest of his team. And look at that. Now they're going to walk in the choke for free behind you guys because you decided to just all focus Ash. You just need one scout to chase him. And you should know that the reason why this is happening is that they're trying to do something, right? I, like no intelligent smart roamer goes for solo plays. Like like tries to force that shit. Unless like you have to. They you do lose Ash. And they don't commit, I guess. Which is good, but nonetheless, I don't like that you guys committed that much. Because that could have gone very bad. Like I think Showstopper was respawning. Yeah, Showstopper was respawning. If Showstopper was there. Hey, can you see this chat? Yes, I can see chat. I'm just not reading it because I want to get through this demo. If Showstopper was with that, with Duwanta there, they would have used into you guys. No doubt in my mind. But thankfully, Show wasn't there. So you guys have a pick. What are you going to do off it? You're poking and prodding choke with heals and beam. So you have to assume they're going to think you're going to come choke now. So kind of your push isn't going to work right now because you're just going to get forced if you try and push. So the best you can do is like try and send in a player, which you're not going to do. So you, you end up doing nothing off the pick. Let's speed up here. It's on 20B right now to try and do something. If they want, they're up numbers. They could just chill and not do anything. <clears throat> so they're thinking about what they want to do. Just a lot of spam going back and forth right now. No one really wants to do anything. 20B are obviously going to take their time right now. Think about what they want to do. Ash has gone sniper. Um, so they're just going to give him a pick in IT. And oh my god! Again, the positioning right now. Number one, like, you guys have given the sniper more respect than he deserves by all being in here. If I know, like, for example, if I'm aware that you guys are all there, I'm just going to walk in. Maybe 20B don't do this. But if I'm aware that you guys are all chilling IT, I'm just going to be like, hey guys, let's just push in because they're giving us ground and we can take it. And then you guys are in an awful position. So you're just kind of stuck now. You can't spam them if they decide to push. And if they don't push, well, they have all the time in the world. You're lucky that they didn't decide to do a play like that where they just walk in on you. Because there really was nothing stopping them. Except maybe Psy, but Psy is by himself and he doesn't have heals, so he could just get pressured and either die or get forced out of the fight. So you're giving too much sniper or too much respect to the sniper, too much sniper to the respect. Weird. Um, and yeah, they're just gonna wait for a pick right now, and I think Ash does get one eventually on Psy. Okay, so they finally decide to do it. They do what I would have called earlier. Oh, they're all in IT. They're not even giving us room. Let's just walk in, team. And they are going to walk in. And again, you're not in good positions to fight them. Somehow, like... Um, like, Sizer's not playing for potential soldier denial. And Alec is... Did he die? Alec's just not even there. Um, so, again, Hellbent's going to do a nice play there, but it would have been shut down if Sizer was just playing here or here, instead of right here. So Hellbent's going to do- oh, the play fails. However, that was well-timed. Hellbent bombs, Van gets aggressive, everyone else gets aggressive. That could have been a lot worse, so well played from Bird Noises there. And you get the force out. Okay, what do you do, what do you do? This is perfect, you guys are milking this time. Oh, you used. Mm, yeah, that's good. Your players over here need help. You need to use there, and you need to save them. Okay, so they drop three. You guys are going to push in here. And that was well played. So Ubers are even. They're down one. Are you guys going to do anything off of this? No, not enough time. So, we're going to reset. You guys gain mid. That was well played on second. That was good. 
well timed, good coordination. That could have been very bad, but played it well. So, any off classes? No off classes from either team. What's the play right now from Bird Noises? Took an app and came back, and I'm still reviewing this? Yeah, I'm just about done. I just really wanted to be in depth with this. So, Showstopper is the one that ends up doing a bomb there after Van suicides. So. Honestly, they probably could have just tried to push, but they sent in show. Which I guess is the safe play. They're up rounds. There's no reason to rush things for 20B. They can take their time. It's on bird noises to try and make something happen right now. So Van's going to be up sniper. And they're going to try and work a pick here. I remember Van gets this pick. This is a very nice pick that we're about to see here. It's going to take a while though, so I'm just going to fast forward. It's right now. Is, we're just waiting on some sniper plays. Okay, this should be about now here. He's going to get it pretty soon. This is good. You guys are pressuring from multiple entrances. Van's just getting as much sight. But, as you can see, the difference... Beautiful. Okay, there's the pick. You guys get the entry there. You need to start working it. Okay, so you're... This is good. The demo's down, so you guys don't rush anything. Just slow push it. They don't have good enough spam. And then Sho's going to take the solo here. These guys right here, all of them need to start backing out. They know that it's a solo. You guys need to just kite out for a few seconds and then come back in. Because if you don't, Sho's going to go for you. Okay, that was good. You guys played it right. Sho goes behind, which is weird. And you guys are going to focus these players down. Well played. Show's still behind. And you guys seem to... Oh, please. Whew, that was close. Okay, so... Side... Oh, side jumps in. I think Gizzer goes down. Doesn't matter anyway. You guys... You played the second there correctly. And it was good on Van to get those picks. And you guys are now, I believe, 5 to... Th or... 3 to 2. Four, is it 3 to 2 or 4 to 2? I don't know. Yeah, it's 3 to 2. So 20B still need 2 more rounds. So, here we go. Demo men getting a mid around the same time. Duana getting the fav more favorable sticky fight. Um, again, Psy guys getting poor positioning. And you notice how 20B is just taking all this ground. Off of that, so... Those little things are what you can kind of matter in the end. Hellbent replicating the Ash play, but no one's paying attention to Hellbent right now. So you guys are, both teams are obviously trying to play very passive mids. And if no one pays, but if no one pays attention to Hellbent, he's useless. Like, you're not going to get out of there. So slow mid, slow mid, just waiting for damage. Vol wants to do something. Vol's getting impatient. Ash bombs in first. Commits. And he just kind of distracts. Nothing's really happening. This is... Wow, what a middle, dude. Literally nothing has happened. Van is the first one to get aggressive. Ooh. And you know what cost that? It was, it was like, impatience. It was literally impatience. Like, the thing is, no one was out of position from really either team. There was nothing to be aggro on. What you needed to wait for was enough damage on a particular player to actually do something, if you're going to play that slow. But you guys rushed it and tried to force something, which even sometimes my own team makes me do, which I don't like. I don't like forcing something to happen if people are just getting impatient with how slow the mid is. So, you lose two. I think the second player was bad luck. The first player deserved to die, but you guys got impatient, and that cost you. And so now you lose the middle. And Hellbent, can I just say, Hellbent did absolutely nothing. That entire middle. Because no one paid attention to him. So, I mean, now he's going to come in. You guys use. That must have been a fucking accident. I think NS misclick because he just stood there like he was like, oh fuck, what did I just do? 
So Andes goes down. I think, yeah, I think it was an accident. You guys must might have been like a little bit on tilt after that pop and like, oh fuck, why would we pop there and blah blah blah. Andes goes down right now. And you guys are pressuring middle, which I like. Sai's gonna come in. Oh, get the pick, Sai! Okay, this is good. You guys played that the best you could, and thankfully it works out. You just, once you know, you like, in those situations, this is where the big plays have to happen. You guys are obviously going to lose the round. So you guys all have to all in, or you're going to set up for last and maybe not even win. Like, you just lose because they have all the time in the world. So you did the right thing by not letting them get away with just pushing you out. You guys all in, you go deep, which is good. Very good. You take the risk, and the risk works out correctly. Okay, you guys are playing it. You're gonna kill Alec, hopefully. Maybe not, he gets to live. It's fine though, you still have heals. Link user comes up, you guys should be pushing very shortly here. So again, Remember, you want to scope out before you push anywhere, so like, just send a little scout through here and be like, okay, they're holding passive, then you guys walk in. Oh, they're holding close, then you guys don't walk in, you use your ad to get the ground. This is the kind of things you gotta be looking for right now. Because honestly... Okay, so, Sai's the one that's poking, I hope he's calling with their passive right now for you guys. Nope, bad play. You guys are going sewer. I don't know why you're going sewer. There's no reason to. If, if Sai is calming like he should be, and saying, Hey, they're really passive. Their side of choke. Their side of middle. Why would you go sewer? You can just walk in choke for free. They don't have the right position to spam you hard enough where Endust is guaranteed to get for it. He might. But now you guys are just going to use through the sewer. And your Uber might do something, but it might not do anything at all. Look at this. They spot you sewer. They know you're coming sewer. Kozen's in a good position this time. They're just going to leave. Oh, ooh, this is actually... 20B, like, are gonna overstay, overstay their welcome, it looks like. Because I think you guys might get two picks here, which is gonna be very good. But again, the thing is, when you play these games, sometimes you might think, Oh, that was a good play, we killed them all and they were out of position. But the thing is, like, it was inherently a bad play. 20B made the mistake. Demo, the reason why it's okay that 20B leave there is look how close this team is to advantage. Like, of course they would leave. They don't have to drop players if Kozen is going to get the Uber in like 10 seconds. There's literally no reason at all to just send in like, Ash alone, yeah, like, I mean, th that's true as well, Cousin, but you're close to Uber here, man, so why would you send Ash? There's no reason, you're just gonna lose a player, I mean, you do lose them anyway, just because your players are too blobbed and a little bit out of position there, but it's just like, I don't know, that's not a bad play for them just to completely get out, when you're that close to Uber, because that's the goal, right? If you force them... Because if they get the pick early, then they can keep chasing, and then they can force you, and all these other things. It all adds up. Vol jumps... Okay. You guys had a shit Uber. And I think it's a good thing to, like, try and make the best of it. But obviously, Vol is just trying to force something crazy right now. Which is not... Uh, not the best idea, because he just goes way too far ahead of his team. He's probably like, I gotta make something happen right now. And nothing's gonna happen, he's just gonna die. And any potential push you could have had off of the Ash pick is now shut down. Because of this. Oh my god, he's the luckiest player in the world. My god. Like, if that was me on the other team, I would have been so tilted. I would have been like, wow, we just let him live? What the fuck, man? Anyways, so he's lucky. But that could have gone very bad. 20B doing the right thing here. Coming in, choke. It's going through is actually not that bad because one of twenty B soldiers couldn't spam. Sewer in time and there were no stickies in sewer would have been super shit of both of the soldiers. But the thing is, like 
sewer you almost have to use because you know all the spam is going to be focused on that choke point. The, th the thing is, 20B just didn't kite it properly. So, like, it, it was just not the best, in my opinion. Not the best call there. So, 20B, slow pushing here. Burn noise is just kind of slowly giving up ground. Hellbent gonna get caught out. That was bad. Hellbent either needed to all in jump commit, or they needed to um, just get all the way out. And now they're gonna drop too, it looks like. But they didn't, because 20B didn't call, they were going sewer. Obviously, still wrong choice, but that's why it worked. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. That's kind of what, yeah, I agree with you. Like, especially because a lot of these things you're saying are things that bird noises might not have even known. So, that's why it's just... Um, they lose two. This is bad now. Full ad here. And this is close to getting uber. <clears throat> they don't have enough players to really spam here, so they just need to all live and get the uber. Yeah, and that's what they'll do. And they're holding last now. Such a bad, such a sad position, not a bad position, such a sad position to be in. Holding last, forced to run NG, all these other things, because you don't want to lose. Because now you're just on the back pedal. And Showstopper comes in here, I think, assuming he had a bigger ad, or maybe he just wanted to take that solo anyway. And then they, they just get the Ubers out of the picture. So, now that there's no Uber, okay, actually, that was very smart from Show. If this is what they're doing, this is their response. Show wanted to get the ubers out of play there where there was no uber exchange that could have potentially happened afterwards because now they're going to rotate and they're going to slow push through right and uh push and just get this room here and kill the gun look at this now they're in for free there's not no worry of an uber coming into them or an uh, like an uber uh kind of being used from either team and so they can just push through here focus down vol vol dies they get two picks look at this they just need to get point presence right now get point presence from 20b and that's game i think no 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 that's 4-2 these rounds are it's only 4-2 i keep forgetting this so and uh, yeah as ninja nick kind of pointed out and I think Endus popped there for that solo. I remember that. Like, he popped on a scout that was never going to die. So it was like nerves, I guess. But that's correct, Nick. He used for no reason. So, okay, so Sai and Duwana getting there roughly the same time. Sai gets the kit, though, and Duwana doesn't. And Duwana's just kind of playing passive. Hellbent doing the same thing. Good. Holding top right. Mm, I hope Van gets on high ground here. Because they have no high ground. But it seems like because Duwana being out of the fight right now, uh, 20B aren't going to pressure up top. But nonetheless, okay, so they're healing up. 20B doesn't have very good positioning. And then suddenly, like, okay, this is good. Link user gets super aggro on Duwana. He finds that Duwana is isolated and goes super aggro and just kind of shuts him out. And look at this rotation here. Luwana was, Luwana? Duwana was 13 health, Link. 13 health. Um, but even if you didn't kill him, that was still a super good play. But your team needs to capitalize right now. That you just fucked them over. Everyone needs to start like pushing and taking around. Because look, they gave up all that positioning to try and kill you over here and help Duwatna. But instead of like Vol bombing, like Vol's still chilling here. Why? Like Vol should not just be chilling and spamming. He's not doing anything. Size on the left, away from heals. Hellbent's lit. Like, Van's the only one that is actually trying to do anything right now. Off of that play. So you guys actually had a perfect opportunity to... Okay, Vol jumps in now. Okay, this is working out. He jumps in now. Okay, very... Okay, you guys did eventually get aggressive. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I thought you guys were all gonna get fucked there. Very good, very good. So well played. You got that pick. I mean, you were a little delayed on your aggression, which could have ended badly, but 
you did the right thing there. You played it right, and that was good. So you guys won that mid. You have full advantage here, and obviously this is going to be your round, assuming you play it right. I know for a fact it will be your round. <laughs> what the f- Endus is just chilling, man. He's Man, he's so scared of, like, using, of getting forced. Um, okay, so, you guys took forever, and I really hope you don't push on this, because you don't have that anymore, obviously. Okay, it looks like you're not. So you should just be trying to take lobby control, go for the suicide. What? Why? This... You guys, like... Number one, end us just chilling and choke. Slowed your push completely. If you guys had not realized that they were building Uber this whole time and getting a defense set up, number one, you didn't really scout. Number two, you used right away through the entrance. And number three... Number three, you don't have ad anymore. Doesn't make sense. This Uber is not going to accomplish anything. Van shouldn't even be committing. You get the gun, I guess. Oh my god. But they still have their players. Here. Okay, Link just should die. Oh, I remember this. I remember this round. You guys are fucking lucky. You are the lucky- like- Oh, and they're on crits too. That's why he built so fast. Never mind, I stand corrected. He built really fast because of crits. So, again, maybe that's not your guys' fault that you pushed on that, and us was probably counting correctly for Uber. But nonetheless, you guys still didn't factor in that there was a gun, and that, like, even if they had normal Uber, he would have been 20% or 30% from getting it. So, if you don't scout for the gun, like, that's just a bad Uber regardless. Anyways, they crits in on you guys, you're getting fucked. 20B. Just beef. Completely. They just leave point open and then Van just stands on it. But, uh, I don't know, you guys just fucked up there. And 20, 20B fucked up even more. Hellbent trying to get some shit talk going, get in their heads. But that's not going to work. That's going to get Showstopper just starting calling everyone a fag now. And he's like, let's not lose to these fags or something. It's a classic Showstopper. Okay, so let's uh, get on the demos here. Sign so Duwana, roughly a minute at the same time. Basically trading stickies. No one really has better positioning right now. Van taking high ground from bird noises. Okay, so this is perfect. Good pressure from Van on uh, on the right onto Duwana. Now, again, when you guys realize this, I really hope your whole team here, this little area here, they start getting aggressive. Because now Duwana is out of the fight. And so is Ash. They're actually two players out of the fight. They're stuck in IT. Jump, full. Jump. 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 Okay. He waits too long to jump. Like, he's just... All of a sudden now, guess what? Duana came back in. He's now safe enough where he won't die but can still spam? Hellbent bombed by him... Or, yeah, he... Hellbent, like, just commits for some reason. But, like... Vol should have bombed earlier... Like, look how aggressive Link user is. Vol should have just been deep right now. Going deep and taking this ground. He takes it too late. Hellbent dies. Through, like, a mistake of just getting caught out by Ash and making him useful, finally. And this obviously isn't going to work. Because he Vol bombs too late. And, oh god, Endus is going to die. And, I yeah, this is, this is the round right now. You guys are going to wipe. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Sai stops the point. I remember this. This is pretty, pretty good. You slowed them down. It's the best you could do in that situation. You made the best of it, man. Uh, you get show. Oh my get show. Oh, I remember this. So Hellbent here, he's in the best position right now. 
but they go IT, they go IT. So right now he can't get the force, and I remember we were calling this when we watched it live. He needs to get Duwana right now. So he's gonna get Duwana. Now right here, Hellbent needs to just go back in the choke and help his team fight. But instead of doing that, he does a really questionable thing and delay his, um, he delays his own kind of like, he doesn't come back in. He goes in and bombs Alec, even though, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he doesn't know Alec is there, but nonetheless, he should have just gone back in a choke and then created a pinch, but now he's just going to die. Like, think about it right now. Like, if Hellbent had lived, he would have been in this position and choke. Look at this. They're not even worried about him. And they weren't worried about him even before. I mean, they would have known and gotten the call. But look at this. Link user's in a perfect position to push up if Hellbent is here. So Hellbent bombs in. Link user pushes up. Ash is going to die and Kozen's going to die. You save the round. But that little minor error from Hellbent... I mean, it wasn't an error, you guys... We're technically at a disad anyway from the get-go, but like you could have come back from that. But instead, Albent like t tries to take the long con, which is not going to work. And Kozen's just going to get out here and try and maintain heals and Uber. Yep, because they're going to play it safe. They know they killed Endust. They just need to get their Uber right now. And uh, yeah, so you guys have to try something, right? So you're trying to force this play right now. But... To be honest, you should just start leaving. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Like, you don't have heals with you. Like, in theory, this is good because you're trying to make something happen. But technically speaking, you could just hold second and wait and then take the safe approach. But you guys are nervous about losing, it seems. And you're trying to, like, force, like, this crazy play to happen. When all Kozen wants to do is get the fuck out and back up and live. You know that's what he wants to do. And you don't even have heals. So, now, if you guys lose anyone here... No, 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 no! You force a play there. When the favor is towards them. You need to play defensively. You need to play defensively. And just chill. And wait for them to play into you rather than you play into them. Hellbent could have had an infinitely better bomb if he had just waited for them, you, them to enter into you guys. But instead he forces it. And now you're down one, and they have that. Right, see you later, Link user. So, they're just gonna push it slow here. They know you're one dead. Gonna push it slow, then we're just gonna come in, Ash making space. You guys are super passive, you wanna get this uber. You're not even gonna take any risks. Just good. You did lose Hellbent, no reason to take a risk. But, Hellbent lives. Kozen gets forced on second, probably. <clears throat> now Sho's gonna go quick on this ad. Good call by him. They're taking both soldiers, as you can see. And they force you guys into spawn. They need to kill the gun, though. You guys are just in the spawn. And this is really close to getting Uber. He uses right away. And he's trying to save his players, but it's just like... 20B, scatter. And so your Uber does nothing, because they have numbers. And they're just gonna like press you guys into a corner, clean up, and get on the point, and win the round. And that's the match. Five to three for Street Oops. So, basically, in summary, um, again, I went over this demo because I think Bruno is a team with a lot of potential. Um, and they could have very easily won that match. But, they just made a lot of mistakes. But, in summary, it's pretty clear that like you guys are falling the same mistakes of how you use your ubers in my opinion like there's little things like how you get forces or uh like and and these little like plays that could have gone better but it's really the ubers you guys are not taking your ubers in the most effective way you're kind of rushing them you're making it so you're not like, you're going through the most convenient and closest entrance, but you're not going through the best entrance. And so as a result, you guys are having these awful Ubers that aren't ever in your favor. And, I don't know, I'd say 
for next season, the biggest thing you guys need to work on is your Ubers. Is how you take them, what you do with them, etc., etc. And also, I mean, this still applies to Ubers. Make sure you're always scoping out how where the other team is playing and always knowing where they're going to be so then again you can have a better uber right if you know they're passive take the take the entrance that will allow you to dry push like a bigger wider entrance where there's a valley maybe more 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 ground if they're close and you have ad and it's small like all these little things i could go on and on and on but that's the most important key point you guys need to work on your ubers because that the ubers are really what kind of cost you guys from winning rounds. They, they prevented you from that. So that's it for the demo review. And I'm probably going to shut down the stream for now because my head hurts. And watching and playing that much 